Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the H3 Podcast Live. If you're on Twitch, if you're on YouTube, it's not live. This has been pre-recorded the previous day. If you want to watch it live, head on over to twitch.tv forward slash H3 Production. You can watch it live next time, but not this time, because it's a recording. I was going to say, we could almost have, like, a choreographed beginning. Like a song and dance well, with yeah. a cape. Yeah, that's funny. We should do that for next time. Today's episode is sponsored by Quip, Audible, and MVMT Movement. Thank you to them. Today's guest is the great and wonderful pioneer of YouTube, Harley Morenstein. That's got to be one of the most Jewish names I've ever heard. <laughs> Props to him. Harley Morenstein. He's got, he's like a, he's like a Jewish warrior. Like when you, like he's a big guy and he's got like a big beard and shit. And like, cause when you think about a Jew, you usually think about like, a guy who looks like me, you know, like a doughy little boy. But there what had to be Jewish warriors. Cause you think back to the biblical stories of like King, King George. What was the guy's name? That's a restaurant. What's the guy's name? The old King Jewish George. King. He was a warrior. <laughs> Um, <laughs> which one? The, the old, the, the old king, David. David? David. Yeah. 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 I wasn't sure. So King David was apparently kicking ass back in the day. So you know that there's some warrior blood in the Jewish line. It's not in me, but it, it is in some. And he happens to be a warrior Jew is what I mean to say. He seems to be like, he you know what have I mean? a warrior vibe. Yeah. When you see him, he's like. Like in Israel, there's like, hey, yeah, my name is Bardsteed. But then there's like warriors. In Israel, you have everything. Right. So it's American, I guess. Y- it's really American. Like in Israel, I wasn't thinking what is the the Jewish stereotype. Mm-hmm. Like inside Israel, you have different stereotypes. Right, right, right. But here, I've learned there's so much like more going on. <laughs> the American Jew is like, oh, I need to call the electrician to put to put in this light bulb. <laughs> what are the stereotypes in Israel? It's I don't know. There's like really dumb ones, but it's more like. Depending on, like, Ashkenazi or Sephardic. Or... So, for you guys who don't know, Ashkenazi is European Jew. Yeah. Sephardic is Middle Eastern Jew. Like, mm. Ar- Arabic, almost. Kind of like how you have here, and I don't know what's politically correct here, but, like, how there's, like, w- d- like black people will have Shut it down. You said black of... people. Shut it down. <laughs> there's stereotypes of white people. Right. So I White like... people had to get their wall like this. <laughs> Because their asses be so high. That's one of my favorite ones from Eddie Murphy. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Whatever. So what, but I'm actually really curious about what are the stereotypes about Sephardic and Ashkenazi Jews in like your Ashkenazi film. Like Ashkenazi don't, re- are, are not as good with cooking. Or like they won't make enough food. That's true. That's not like a Sephardic, stereotype. Like Sephardic, there's always be a ton of food. There's That's... no such thing as like running out of food. Right. And Ashkenazi is like, they'll put like, they'll count how many They're people cheaper. there are. They're cheaper. They're cheaper. Is that part of it? Because I feel like I that's guess. real. Yeah. Right. What else you got? Mm. That can't be the only one. Like don't hold back. Yemeni. Ooh. I, <laughs> Ooh. I don't know. What it's, about it's the really Yemenite? Dumb. Tell me. I, I want to hear it. It's interesting. I think everybody. My listen. best friend is Yemeni. Okay, but there's like a stereotype that they're cheap. Huh. I so know. I love that even amongst the Jews in Israel, there's one sect that's really cheap. <laughs> it's like all Jews are cheap, but the Yemenites, they're super cheap. <laughs> Watch out for those guys. It's so, it's just, it's, it's fascinating to think that, like, everybody thinks about Jews in this way. But then when you go to Israel, when everyone's Jewish, you have all these sub-stereotypes. It just kind of shows how stupid it all is. It is really dumb. And, like, no one our age really talks about this stuff anymore. It's, like, old stuff. Is there any other interesting ones? Because I think it's great. Uh, I well, don't what do you, know. what do people think remember. about the, the, uh... The the Sephardic Jews. Um, a lot of times they go together with like the Arsim and Fehot type. Explain what Arsim <laughs> is. <laughs> I don't know. Arsim is like um, a Jersey Shores Jew, a Jew. Yeah. It's like a hey, what's going on? I got my <laughs> pop gala. Forget about it. I just got herpes the other day. Forget it. I just threw a little rubbing alcohol. I got my dick in another girl. Forget about it. Hey, put on the Mizrahi. I wonder if uh, there's any Israelis listening. And hey, and they dance like upset. this. <laughs> I guarantee nobody's upset about making fun of Arsim. Hey. <laughs> okay. Anyway, that was a nice little. Any other stereotypes <laughs> that we can talk about here? Any other people we can piss off? 
Um, I am super excited about this weekend. We are going tomorrow, hopefully, with with post to Coachella backstage. <laughs> Hopefully, like we just before coming here, he asked if we want to come. He's like, I got tickets for you guys. The thing with Post is that, like, whenever he invites you somewhere, you know you're going to be on a crazy, r- reckless, almost helpless journey. Because, <laughs> like, he'll get you there, and because his life is so insane, <laughs> and he's playing tomorrow at Coachella. Yeah. So it's almost like, I'll get you in. <laughs> But beyond that, you're in a war zone. You, 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 <laughs> on your own. <laughs> it's like, hey man, nice to see you. I love you, buddy. Thanks. For, oh, you're the best. And then he goes out, and then it's, and then it's just me and you, like in a, <laughs> just like in floating in space. <laughs> it's exciting. It's fun. <laughs> it's a thrill ride. I'm really excited. I've never been to Coachella. Me neither. I hope. I don't know what to expect. I what 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 I imagine is that. Well, there's like I guess there's two portions. There's like the public area, and then there's like yeah, the backstage, the yeah, the artist area. That'd be cool. I'm gonna harass. <laughs> I'm gonna harass people. Like what? I'm gonna be that guy who's taking pictures with all the famous people who shouldn't be there. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, Drake. Drake. Hey, man. Love let's play Fortnite. Song. <laughs> here's my. Here, let's play Fortnite. Here's my. Here's my card. <laughs> I'm gonna bring cards. <laughs> here's my card. It just has my Twitter <laughs> tag. Oh my god. It's a USB key. <laughs> oh <Just> wow. <laughs> That'll get him. They never seen that. And then on it is a spyware, is blowware. <laughs> it installs the H3 app, which just unloads a fucking virus to the whole network. Um, and then on Monday, we're going with the whole clan, the H3 clan and the Teddy Fresh clan. There's eight of us to Disneyland. It's a company event. We're going to build memories <laughs> that will la- endure beyond these more, these. Mortal bonds. <laughs> I to, guarantee to it. What? <laughs> I don't know. We're just, it's going to be the best time. Nobody's ever going to forget about it. We're going, it's going to be adorable. We're going to all wear matching outfits. We're all going to. Not gonna, the whole outfit, but we're all going to wear red beanies. And shirt. Ethan's and insisting shirt. on the shirts. Okay. We have to do yeah. the shirts. Yeah. So if you happen to be on Disneyland on Monday and you see a big group of hooligans walking around in red <laughs> beanies, come say hi. That'll be fun. <laughs> So, <laughs> there's a couple of things I want to talk about before we uh, bring Harley in, in on that. First things first, um, the H3 live show that we had planned for the 26th. Yes. Was right. Brad buried. <laughs> we pulled the <laughs> F and plug on that B, and it was so. I don't want to. I don't want to throw any blame mm. around. Okay. <laughs> but here's what happened. We were. Uh, I don't know how to say there this without just a lot of misunderstanding in the process of the prices on the tickets. Right. So and 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 somebody somebody put the tickets up without finalizing the details with us. First of all, we were misled mm-hmm. about the price. Like we were told there was going to be three dollars in services fees. So the ticket is thirty bucks. I kind of wanted to do them for twenty five. But then they threw it up for 30 without consulting. So then I was like, okay, fine. So 33 was what I thought would be the final price out the door. Mm-hmm. But what hap- what ended up happening was there were so many fees, so much taxes and shit. It ended up going from 30 to 50 bucks. So uh, two people coming to do our live show would end up paying a hundred dollars to come watch us yeah. just do the podcast it's and i just wasn't a podcast i wasn't comfortable with that at all i mean our last show at the improv was 22 bucks and like i don't know if there was like a couple bucks service charge but it wasn't but that was it it wasn't 50 percent mm-hmm. of the ticket price and so one the tickets went up without us knowing and the, the price was a little higher than i wanted and then two we didn't realize at first all the fees that came with it <laughs> That's Only what I, after people complained to us. Yeah, like, I was like, what, what the hell? I thought it was just three bucks. I thought yeah. a ticket would cost 33 bucks plus tax. And so then I saw that there was these insane fees. And I, w- I was just so pissed off. And I yelled at them. And I was like, dude, this, this isn't right. This isn't the way it's supposed to be. So they go back to the venue. And then the venue magically reduces the, the convenience fee. From ten fifty down to like three bucks, and then I was like, "Okay, 
can you refund everyone who already bought tickets? They're like, well, I don't know. We're dealing with the AXS and they're, and I'm like, dude, and it just started. And I was just angry. I was like, why didn't you reduce the price from $3 out the get go? Like what, what, what the hell? They says, well, nobody asked us to. I was like, okay. <laughs> the whole thing was just super sour and, and it just didn't feel right anymore. And we weren't sure if people were going to get refunded who bought before and after. Most of all, we really didn't. That wasn't the <coughs> price we wanted for this kind of show. A hundred bucks? It's ma- made us uncomfortable that people would pay so much. And, and also a lot of people have to travel. So right. you'd pay for traveling, food, drinks, right. and a and hundred bucks for tickets. It's like... 20 bucks for parking. No, yeah. downtown LA. <laughs> so we're just like, you know what? This isn't right. Let's just Let's just pull the plug on this. So everybody who bought tickets is getting... A full refund, including all the convenience fees and everything. And I know on Twitter, a couple of people were like, well, I bought plane tickets. Mm -hmm. And so I did genuinely feel bad about that. So what I offered on Twitter, and if anybody's listening, bought tickets in an airplane ticket, email dan at h3productions.com, and we will help compensate you personally on on that. There is one funny anecdote. (laughs) The guy on Twitter is like, man, I got fucked by this. I bought plane tickets. I was like, all right, well, you know, we'll compensate you. Thinking that, what, how much is a domestic flight? Like $200? He sends me the receipt. Two first class tickets. 1600 bucks. <laughs> I was like, bro, I don't even fly first class. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't pay you $1,600, bro. But... Those are some life choices you have to live with. <laughs> We haven't fully looked into all the details yet because we want to s- just get everything first, all the people that there are to right. compensate and then yeah. look into the details and make decisions. Yeah. But we like when we opened that one, we are kind of shut out. <laughs> Dan, can you? Yeah. So anyway, if you if you got uh, if you bought a plane, send your your proof of purchase to Dan. Um. And uh, we'll we'll help but, you out. We'll help you out how we can. But hey, that's crazy that you fly here to see us. You know. Yeah. On the other so. hand, let's acknowledge how freaking crazy that is. Shit. <laughs> thank you, man. Uh, what else? Oh man, I wanted to talk. There's a couple other things I wanted to talk about here. For one, this is kind of personal, but I feel like it's interesting. All right. <laughs> I don't know how to broach this, but I feel like I want to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> we've been trying. Okay, we've been trying to get pregnant. We being me, Eli's been sticking her dick right in my belly button. That well, sounds I say- horrible. I know it does because when you say what? we, it's like, well, I'm trying to get Eli pregnant. When we say we, you're trying it's to. It's get- we. It's a group it- effort. But okay, whatever. <laughs> We're we've been trying to get pregnant. We don't really know how it works. Eli's been. Sh- I've been rubbing my dick all over Eli. We're not okay, really sure the mechanics of how it works. Hila's been... We don't know how it works, so... We've been trying, but so far nothing's worked. This is not what I agreed to talk about. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, so we've been trying. And... <laughs> getting, you you would think, like, by the population of the world, that getting pregnant would be something easy. Was there, like, 7 billion <laughs> mouth breathers in this world? <laughs> taking up all the oxygen, you know, in China, they have like laws that like you can only have one kid or we throw the second in the river <laughs> Everyone's scared about overpopulation. I can't even get to have a kid <laughs> How did we get to this point in history and evolution if it's this hard to get a kid like we like you've been off birth control for like two years And recently in the past couple months, you've been doing like ovulation tests timing it out and stuff Wait, what are you saying? That I've been on birth or off, off? Off. off. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because you said on. Off. I meant off. <laughs> Maybe that's the problem. No. We figured it out. <laughs> you went on birth control. You're supposed to go off birth control. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been trying and trying. It's so and it's so disappointing because you try it all month. All month, guys. No, I don't know if I want to talk about this. <laughs> we try all month. <laughs> And then it's it's dis- it's disappointing because Ela gets her period, and then, you and then it's like fuck. You have to wait another month, and it get, it starts to get really stressful, at this point when you actually start trying. But the but what frustrates me is like 
what is going on with this planet where everyone's just <laughs> shitting out kids? But apparently a lot of people have this problem. A lot of our friends. Yeah, almost everyone that I know had really hard time making it happen. Right. So I don't know. We had another friend who just had a kid like a year ago. They said they were trying like with test, like timing it out and stuff for six months. Mm. And I'm like, <laughs> where are all these people coming from? When you're 18, if yeah, you just fuck, 18, it's just like... They, they make you, they make it sound like you just touch a guy and you're pregnant. Seriously. In sex education, that's what it makes <laughs> it sound like. Sperm can last for 30 days. So even if you have sex when she's on her period, the, swar- the, the sperm can hide in her vagina for 30 days and get her pregnant when she ovulates. It's like, seriously? So my, le- my point, my lesson to you is don't use protection. Oh, God. Because most likely you'll be fine. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Protection is honestly to keep your dick from rotting off your body. No, and to prevent unwanted pregnancy, (laughs) let's not start some rumors now that we're... Use a condom. (laughs) I guarantee it's worth it. So, I don't know. That's just something that's... that's, I'm just trying... I'm trying to be more honest, right? I'm trying to be more genuine. I'm trying to talk about what's on my mind a little bit. This is something that we've been thinking a lot about and, and doing, you know... For, for a while, so let's talk about it. Let's be real. Can't have a fuck. I'm trying to. I'm trying. Maybe I'm. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe we're doing something wrong. Maybe it's supposed to go somewhere else. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. You know, Einstein says that the definition of insanity is trying something over and over again and not getting results. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta stick it somewhere else, yo. <laughs> I don't mean like the butt. I was just making a joke. <laughs> I was just making a joke. I just wanted people to know that wasn't an anal sex joke or anything. <laughs> all right, what else we got here? <laughs> you guys heard about all this? I was gonna make a joke about how I got in trouble, got in trouble for the transphobic tweet, and that's why the show was canceled. But I did it <laughs> out of order. Um, I don't really want to talk about that. I think it's whatever. Uh, there's a couple of videos I wanted to watch, but maybe we can watch it with Harley because he's here. Because mm. I've got the count. Dankula video and the Sinclair news clip that I wanted to watch. Maybe we should bring Harley in. Is that weird though? To like do that and then talk to him? Maybe we should just watch it now. It's not weird. It's not weird? Not weird. (laughs) All right. Apparently it's not weird, Ela said. (laughs) Let's do it then. So um, let's go to a quick commercial break. We will be right back with ya boy Harley. We're going to have a lot of fun. There's so much to discover. There's so much to learn in this life. It's going to blow your mind. Don't go away. You guys hear that? That's the sound of everybody's favorite electric toothbrush, Quip, who is also, incidentally, the sponsor of today's episode. When it comes to your health, brushing your teeth is one of the most important parts of your day, and Quip knows that. They've combined dentistry and design to make a better stronger, slicker, more beautiful electric toothbrush. Here's the deal. Quip is the new electric toothbrush that packs just the right amount of vibration into a slimmer design at a fraction of the cost of a bulkier traditional electric toothbrush. I mean, this is it. This is all it is. And that's all you need. You ever see one of these, like, uh... Yeah, it's got a whole package with a stand. It's like a power tool. (laughs) You have to, like, unholster it out of your belt. It's like, give me a break. This is all you need. Um, guiding pulses alert you when it's time to switch sides, making brushing the right amount of time completely effortless. I personally, a lot of people, I brush for 30 minutes because I'm neurotic, but a lot of people are like, I don't know how long I need to brush. Mm -hmm. That's the genius about Quip. It vibrates for for three minutes. It tells you when to switch sides and, and you know when you're done and when, when you've done enough brushing. That's the I can tell when I use this, I usually, I'm about to stop before it stops. So, That's, like, normally, I guess I would do two minutes, but then this makes me do three. That's funny, because when it pu- when it tells me to stop, I'm like, I just started. <laughs> You're insane. <laughs> By the way, I thought I had a cavity, and I, I have had one cavity in my life when I was, like, eight. And the pain went away. I was like, Eli, I have a yeah, cavity. Yeah, I thought I think. there's no way you have a cavity. I was like, I think I have a cavity. And Eli's like, oh, hell yeah. I can't <laughs> wait for Ethan to go get fucked up by the dentist. <laughs> and I was like, nah, just, I'm fine now. I'm happy to say. Thanks to Quip, by the way. It comes with a mount that sucks right to the mirror. Right there, dude. Also, because that thing cleans your mouth, should also be clean. 
Quip subscription plan refreshes your brush on a dentist recommended schedule, delivering new brush heads every three months for just five dollars, including free shipping worldwide. This which is, is it. just how I, I was free shipping worldwide. Who, what, what kind of underground consortium is this? What kind of weird? I love that they took the time to make a little package a for pod. the little toothbrush refill. It's a pod because they didn't need to. You already have this. Quip is backed by a network of over 10,000 dental professionals, including dentists, hygienists, and dental students. Again, the dental students don't, I don't, I wouldn't ask them for advice. <laughs> They're students. They don't know anything. They're students. I'm not, what, am I supposed to take the endorsement of a student? Oh, yeah, you should really use this toothbrush. What do you do? I'm studying dentistry. I'll talk to my dentist. <laughs> Most toothbrushes don't get named one of Times Magazine's best inventions of the year, but guess what? Who did? Quip. Find out why by getting one, yourself one of these amazing toothbrushes. Quip starts for just 25 bucks. If you go to getquip.com slash h3 right now, you'll get your first refill pack free with a Quip electric toothbrush. That's your first refill pack free at getquip.com slash h3 spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash h3. If you are not quipping yet, then you are quitting life. I don't know. But give it a shot, because I, I <laughs> genuinely do love this product, and I think you will, too. So thank you very much to Quip for sponsoring us. Up next, we've got everybody's most beloved audiobook service, Audible. Um, for our audience, Audible is offering a free audiobook with a 30-day free trial. If you want to listen, Audible has got it. Just go to audible.com slash h3podcast or text h3podcast to 500-500. 500 500 and browse their unmatched selection of audio content download a title free and start listening it's that flipping easy whether you want to feel healthier get motivated learn something new or just relax and listen audible has got a book for that here's what i recommend to you guys you've probably seen the last jedi it's been a lot of people had a lot of opinions about this book okay i personally thought it was okay the Is movie that, yeah I thought it was okay. Is that okay? But here's... I loved it. Oh, you loved it. All right. Well, great. Um, today's guest loved it, too. Harley's apparently a super fan. I don't know if we're talking... This is pre-recorded, so I don't know where we are in the Before conversation. Before we talk to him. I don't know where we are in the conversation, <laughs> but maybe we're talking about it right now. Um, the Last Jedi Expanded Edition by Jason Fry is an audio book that expands on the original story because they cut a lot. They, I, I, I just got to say, a lot of the characters were undeveloped. A lot of the plot line were undeveloped. So in this story, you get all the details, all the development. You really get a better sense of understanding of what was going on. So if you didn't like it, you get to know what was going on. If you loved it, you get even more. I highly recommend listening to The Last Jedi Expanded Edition and it's going to be a lot of fun. Here was what else you got. Speed control. You can listen to books faster or slower. The narration, sp the speed suits your desires. That's really cool. What did they have them read it at like five different speeds? Today's audio book is brought to you by... Yeah, how did they do Today's it? It's probably something where they like pitch shift it. Huh. It's AI. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, get a free audio book with a 30-day free trial at audible.com slash h3 or text h3 podcast, all one word, to 500, 500. 500. That's uh, audible.com slash h3 podcast or text pod h3 podcast to 500, 500. Go listen to The Last Jedi Expanded Edition for free. That link, by the way, is audible.com slash h3 podcast, not h3. Thanks to audible.com slash h3 podcast. God! <laughs> First, uh, I can't talk. You guys get the idea. It's audible.com slash h3 podcast. Go listen to the book for free. The Last Jedi Expanded Edition. Thank you, Audible, for supporting us. Oh, my goodness. And finally, we've got, you know them, you love them, MVMT Movement. These guys are the greatest, right? They make the best watches in the game. You gave me these are yours. But now they're making the best sunglasses in the game. What? Oh my god, look at this. Dude, these actually look and feel amazing. Wow. They feel, thank you, man. <laughs> they feel sturdy. They look great. I feel like this is the best looking sunglasses maybe I've ever worn. They Can really you fit that? you, Yeah, I've been trying to find a pair like this for a long time. Um, these guys, 
listen here, buddy. So here's the deal with sunglasses. You 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 get a nice pair. It costs two hundred bucks, or more. Or more. My my thing is when I buy a nice pair of sunglasses, I end up like not liking it after a week. Mm-hmm. I'm like like damn, I didn't even like these. I don't know why that happens. That happens to me. But so on the other side, when you buy like a thirty dollar pair, they just break and they're crap and they're built like like garbage. So here movement comes along. And they say, you know what? Flip it. How about we make quality, trendy sunglasses at a fair price? These things aren't cheap plastic. They're acetate, meaning it's more durable. It's not plastic. It's acetate. They specifically said to say that. I don't know if that means anything to you, <laughs> but apparently it does. Acetate. Look it up. They start at just 70 bucks, though. These girthy, meaty acetate, <laughs> polarized. These things are slick, and they start at 70 bucks. If that's not a compromise of style, quality, and price, then call me the Pope, because I'm not lying. Okay? So they got they have a ton of styles to choose from. They got everything. They got classic, trendy, round, aviator, mirrored, polarized, for him, for her, for it. You're sure to find the perfect pair. This pair is called the Renegade, because that's just kind of how I identify. And well, mine is called Savage. Pound it. He was a savage. I knew it all along. <laughs> So, guys, (laughs) movements already revolutionized the watch industry. Now it's time to change the game for sunglasses. Get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to MVMT.com slash H3. Go to MVMT.com slash H3 and join the flippin' movement today. Get 15% off off these excellent, amazing sunglasses. Thank you so much to our sponsors, guys. Let's get right back into it, shall we? Uh, welcome back, everybody. They should podcast. <laughs> what up? We are back with Harley Morenstein. I'm on the show. I was mm-hmm. ma- I was joking before. First of all, welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. I'm you're on the one show of the most. Now. Yes. Yep. <laughs> I'm so happy you're here because first of all, let me just say that it's a little surreal for me to be sitting here with you. I probably told you that because we hung out a couple of times, but you were probably the first person that I watched on YouTube before I even dreamed about having. A YouTube channel. I was at work, and we would pass around epic mealtime videos, like amongst each other in the office. And that was just you were like a, you know, it was just like you were YouTube royalty. I mean, you're YouTube royalty, and so it's really weird to have come to the point where I can sit at a table with you and do a podcast. That means a lot. That means a lot. Sometimes I don't know if I'm like I'm like I look at the landscape of YouTube and I'm like, am I like Nick Cage of YouTube? Where it's like, yo, this guy, everyone knows this guy, everyone loves this guy, this guy's a legend, he's been there, man, he's been there, and it's like, what's the last movie box office, how to do it? <laughs> oh, okay, okay, but you know what, he's gonna get another chance, we'll do another one with him, because right. he's been that solid. Right. Or I'm like, maybe I'm like Gene Simmons of YouTube, it's like, this guy's still here, that's what he looks like now, oh my god. You're not Gene Simmons, yeah. man. You're def- I mean, if, if you're making me choose between the two, I'm Nick you're Cage. De- and, and who wouldn't want to be Nick Cage? Me. That's awesome. Yeah, exactly. gotta, no, I want to be. Someone's yeah. got to be Nick Cage. Somebody's I feel gotta. like that's me. Yeah. I feel like I'm the Nick Cage guy, you know? Like, I'm like, you got a job? I'm on it. Right. I'll do it. Cool. Yeah, the bacon guy will do it. Right. I think that was like a, a motto for a while. <laughs> well, I was just like, you know, I'll just tell people that just so that I'm not all about bacon, I'll take roles in other people's videos. And they'd be like, oh, that's awesome. Just come here and hold this bacon and yell. Oh and I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Uh, uh, <laughs> so it's like uh, everything I'm doing, I'm yelling about bacon. Well, the first thing I noticed about you when I see you is that the guy that I used to watch back then looked a lot different from the guy that's sitting in front of me right now. You 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 look good, dude. You got you you look good. You dress good. Thank you. You're Thank killing you. it. What's going on? What <laughs> happened, dude? Well, here's, so here's the secret. Uh, I just watched myself look worse and worse every single week, and it's weird to have that documented every week, right. where you could just like <laughs> see your progression or regression. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and it's crazy because it's kind of like this. And I feel like I've been traveling a lot lately, so I feel like I'm kind of like on the down. I feel terrible, but I got gel in my hair, so that counters everything. (laughs) You feel good with the gel. I did an interview the other day. Like, I legit did an interview the other day, and after the interviewer was like, are you single? Sorry? I was like, hello, I'm not going to be wearing a hat for a a bit, I guess. A female interviewer sent you that much love? A real live one was like, are you single? And I was like, who says who says this? <laughs> Why are you asking? Me. And I was like, <laughs> can, you imagine, can you imagine? Can you imagine being approached by a female like that? I can't. 
Well, that's, that's why that's it was very unusual. Very, it was very unusual. That's a for hard. Girl, like, it was very girl. unusual. That's uh, some Nick Cage shit. I, that's, <laughs> honestly, that's all I thought. I was like, she must know that I was uh, in the Ghost Rider movie, <laughs> equivalent of YouTube videos. <laughs> right, 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 right. right. Yeah. So, yeah. but you have a girlfriend, so that yeah, she's outside. Yeah. I brought her. Really she's cool. Entertaining Shredder. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Actually, Shredder's no, actually Shredder under Shredder the desk. So yeah. I don't her know why you come sucks. on my show and lie like that. <laughs> her life sucks. Shredder's <laughs> in here right now. He's under right the table. Under, oh, he's on you guys. Really uncomfortable. The oh, place like, under my. Why isn't he jumping in my face right now? If he's, he's in sleeping. this room, he's, he's sleeping. He has zero and ten. That's all I have. Okay. He's got a zero right now. But like, what? Tell me more about like your physical transformation because I'm always someone who's unhappy with the way I look, even though I make a meme out of it. Doesn't I'm not like utterly depressed, but I know I'd be happier if I was more fit. Yeah, you're like me in a way that I, I at least what I could imagine is like uh, I, you know after I just literally put up on my Insta story a picture of your belly, look you looking down at the camera with your belly there. Oh great! Um, <laughs> <laughs> like it's like you know you right. post it yourself as well. I remember I, uh, I I I have these times where I'll sit down like to put on socks and I'll be like. Ooh, look at this yes. bad boy, you know? There's a lot of people who can relate to that right now. Yeah, and whoever's around, I'm like, yo, I'm like, come give this a pinch. They're like, I don't want to touch it. I'm like, come touch it. They're like, it's fine. It's not even that bad. You're like, well, I you're need lying you to, to me. Touch you're me. lying to me. Did this ever happen to you? This was one of my, I was fatter than I am now, my most fat. And I was like, I got to do something about this. I went to t- uh, tie my shoe and I was, couldn't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> That was my lowest point. Did that ever happen to you? <laughs> well, I don't know if I can't breathe, but like, I couldn't I breathe. go to put on the socks, and it would be like, when I'm done, I'd be like, Ugh. right. Like, come on, I'm like, oh, there's like a tear in there. Yeah. 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 Uh, there were... I had to hold my breath. I would literally take a deep breath. That's insane. Well, I, from, I know. At your age? <laughs> for me, I had, I had a moment where I was just looking in the mirror, and I just had like a, an angle before I was getting in the shower, probably charging a phone at the same time and whatever. And I just looked back, and I was like, like, is that my ass or my back? No, oh, no. Or where does my back and my <laughs> right. ass begin? I'm like, right. what's happening? And I was like, just like, that's my body. I was like, it's like fully like people joke like potato, but like I was full on potato ass. Huh. And uh, I, that was just a moment for me. I was like, oh, I should maybe change a bit. Hmm. All I did was drop the carbs. I did the no carb thing. Keto? Yeah. The keto diet. Okay. It was good. That's it. I enjoyed it. Uh, Are you well. still on the keto? No, I, I, I got off it. I, uh, you know, I think... It's not meant to be forever type mm-hmm. thing, huh. but uh, Amir, one of the guys that cooks on Epic Meal Time, has been on it like nonstop, and he's just gone from like uh, disgusting slob to really trim guy. Mm-hmm. I have uh, seen those before and after pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're still, wild, yeah. and yeah, it's, it's just it was impressive. literally just uh, for me a big thing was drinking water because if you drink water, then you stop snacking. Mm-hmm. And uh, oh, Fills hey, you if you're watching and you're a disgusting slob, and I, I'm a disgusting slob, but I transitioned back and forth between the two. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, uh, I would say drink, and it always sounds cliche and dumb, and you're like, oh, you idiot, drink more water. Seriously, I started mm-hmm. drinking, if you aim to drink like six to eight liters of water a day, don't even get me started on Coke Zero and Diet Coke. I love that shit. But it makes but you want, it, it makes you, it, it, it's, it's like it's even without bad. breaking it down, it makes you want to eat more. Yeah. The fa- that Like the, it makes you want to snack. The fake sugar doesn't work. No. Well, this is what I heard. Apparently we have triggers to sweetness. And remember, everything I'm saying is nonsense. Who the fuck am I? I'm not sure. anyone that ever should be commenting on that stuff. But what but I heard. That being said. Yes, <laughs> I heard, what I, the, quote me on this, um, is uh, <laughs> that when you have something sweet, like Diet Coke is super sweet, Coke Zero is yeah. super sweet, there are receptors in our body where it's like sweet means high calorie. It's a right. treat. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh, incoming intense sweetness, crank up the metabolism. Let's right. go, boys. Lots of sugar coming mm-hmm. through. Oh, no sugar? Mm-hmm. That's weird. I thought there was going to be lots of sugar, mm-hmm. but I guess we're wrong. And then it creates these false alarms. Mm-hmm. So the next time when you are eating something sweet or something that does have a lot of mm-hmm. carbs in it, your body's like, ah, he's just joking. It's Diet Coke. Don't Doesn't eat metabolize it. Right. And then uh, you just get destroyed. And mm-hmm. it's, I think know, that's right. Yeah, I, I, I feel like I think that. that's true. I feel like that's got to be right. The biggest thing, though, for me was sleep. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, a, I hate sleeping. I love staying up late. I'm always really? like, you don't need to sleep. That's so stupid. Like, you're better off, you know, trying to stay awake as hard as you can. You don't so enjoy you don't... sleeping? I love sleeping when it happens. But Trying to sleep. But now these days, it's like once midnight rolls around, I'm like, oh, now no one's going to fuck with my shit. I can start that video game I wanted to start, mm. or I can go and I can work on something that's like a side thing, or I mm. could, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. sit sit there just 
smoking, watching like uh, five hours of a cult on Netflix, whatever so, it is, I just value that solo time I get there at night. So how did you make that switch? You're saying you used to do that and now you sleep. Well, I go now I've been traveling, so I go back and forth all over the time. I've had terrible sleep the last couple of days, mm -hmm. but I noticed that me on, at my best, it's like a domino effect. It starts with water and then sleep, mm. and then I want to go to the gym, and then you just don't want to snack at that point. Because mm. you're already committed. Yeah, you don't want to do anything so, else. So when you went from potato in the mirror. Yeah. I don't know why. I just had to pause. <laughs> I'm, I'm on my way back phrase. to potato in the mirror. Right <laughs> you look now. good. You, yeah. You're not a potato in the mirror right now. Yeah, I can you're show you something. You're not a potato <laughs> in the mirror in my eye. <laughs> You're a beautiful, chiseled Jewish warrior. We were talking about how oh, you're yeah. a Jewish warrior before, but uh, uh, we said that you look like a warrior. A we, Jewish I, warrior. I was saying there's two types of Jews in the world. There's like little like a hey, little like me, and then there's like Jewish warriors like during the King of David, like biblical shit. But anyway, <laughs> when you went from potato in the mirror to Jewish, was warrior. it was it like a straight dis? Like you were like I'm in, I'm going. Yeah, it's, it's, if you really think about the, all the times that I looked at myself and I was like, oh, it's terrible. Like all those times c culminate in many false starts. Right. There's so many times where it's like, now it's the time. See, that's my <laughs> And then something happens. You're like, wait, tomorrow might be Zyke. the time because like, that's good. Exactly. Yeah. 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 But those false starts are important. They really are. I really feel like you mm. build on that. Like, Interesting. like I, I maybe got to a place where I felt comfortable because I had all those false starts leading up to it. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't have happened if I didn't feel one way, you know, many times, you know, because after the fifth time, you're going to be like, am I going to say this is going down again or am I going to lie to myself right. again? How many times? Right. For me, it was like 27 times. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> keep doing that's it. That's cool. I like keep that. doing it. Keep failing. Seriously. I like that. No, I think that's important for people listening to remember that it's okay to have those false starts because eventually you're going to get to the point you, you want to be at. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's what I think. It's happened with, what's happened with yeah. me, you know? Um, when you, when you, you, do you guys ever catch shit for wasting food on Epic Meal Time? Like, yeah. I'm sure that's probably yeah. the biggest criticism people say about the show. Uh, yeah, well, there's lots of, there's lots of criticisms. One that's consistent that comes up is, do you guys eat all this? And it's like, it's a multi-tiered question answer. Uh, there are times where we've, food has been contaminated and we've thrown out an uncomfortable amount of food where we've been like, oh, something like, we're like, that's, and we do, we're like, that sucks, you know? And we're like, what would, is what it salvageable? It, uh, otherwise. But it's just, you know, that sometimes other times we're like, we're five guys on camera and there's about eight people off camera. Okay. Mm -hmm. And people on set like are ready. They're when always it's like, hungry. <laughs> you're there like filming for six hours. They're ready. Like they want to eat it. People want to try it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we, uh, we, there were episodes where we knew there was going to be a big waste. Mm -hmm. Like one time we put, uh, we stuffed, um, 50 birds into 10 pigs and attached all the pigs ass right. to mouth. We did yeah. it years ago and I just knew that it wasn't going to get eaten. And we literally ate like two of the pigs mm -hmm. and the other eight, we had set it up with a soup kitchen in advance. Mm -hmm. They came with like garbage bags, literally scooped it all wow. in garbage wow. bags. I was like, what's it going to be? And they were like soup for a year. Whoa. So I was like, okay, really? that's cool. Did we did, it? we did our TV show. We did, uh, we did, uh, donated a portion of the budget to feedingamerica.org. Right. But a lot of people are like, yo, why don't you go give that to, uh, like, homeless people on the streets? And it's like, you actually can't. Yeah, it's illegal. Yeah, it? like, it's it's like you just expose yourself. Huh, really? If you're not, if you're, like, a production company, Not illegal, that doesn't but mean, it's a liability. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. mean you could feed people. You can't feed someone. And if someone because gets sick, like, you don't have insurance you? for that. You're screwed oh. for that. Some guy is really? just going to be like... I puked, and so I'm suing you for poisoning me. Wow. Yeah, God, exactly. This is America. This is even, even like, if you go look at grocery stores where, like, a lot of the times where we're doing meat-heavy episodes, we're buying meat that's getting, ex that's going to be expired anyways. We mm -hmm. go there whenever mm -hmm. there's stuff on sale, like expired meats, it's like one more day. We go and we buy all those up. Those get thrown out. A lot of the stuff that we use would have gotten thrown out. And, you know, if you ever watch the grocery store, what they'll do is they'll, like, triple, quadruple bag things and lock the dumpster in the back. Because they could throw something out and someone can go in the dumpster, eat it, get sick, and then also sue. God bless so, America. So, yeah. I actually really do love America. God bless America. I am Canadian and I really love this place. Every time I come here, I'm like, I love this country. <laughs> you, you used to live here when you yeah, were Yeah, I lived in Montreal. Years, yeah, now you're back in Canada. I lived right? here for two years and now I'm back in Canada and I, I come here for work very often. Mm -hmm. uh, Where do you guys film from now? Toronto. So can you can you get rid of the food there? It's not a sue happy there, right? No, you, it's still the same scenario. Like you, uh, huh. like you can get in trouble because we're we are a company, so you can't.
be giving food you out. Don't like, you don't want any feed, liability. Exactly. You can't feed someone. You could, <laughs> you know, you can get in a lot of shit for that. You know what I mean? If someone starts barfing, they go to the hospital and like shit goes down and it's really expensive. Mm. Like that's, that's on us. You know what I, I don't mean? really understand that criticism though, as if like somehow this one large meal you made is going to solve world hunger. Well, the biggest thing is like, I noticed the people are always like, Oh, look at that waste. And you know what? Everyone wastes. Yeah. But before Epic, before Epic mealtime happened, I never did anything. I didn't do anything like for the homeless or anything like that. And mm. the episodes where we've gone to soup kitchens and volunteered and stuff like that, or if we donated, the most I've done is during this time on Epic mealtime, like it kind of like the guilt aspect of it, because mm-hmm. there was some inspired me to do something. Mm. But then the people that go and come and they're like, oh, wow, look at this guy. I'm like, motherfucker, I hope you volunteer. Right. I hope you're a volunteer you over here right now talking shit right. about <laughs> this. Because right. if you're just some asshole that's, you know, like, oh, man, look at this guy wasting food. And it's like, well, you're on, you're on the internet. Like, Meanwhile, I, throwing like half eaten Carl's Jr. burger in the garbage. No, they yeah. never finish their Carl's Jr. No. You know that. <laughs> yeah. And also, I feel like, I feel like at the same time, it's like, uh, you know, if you were to overly scrutinize so many things, you really can't. I could be like, well, look at you paying for internet when people are starving. <laughs> yeah. You should <laughs> How cancel dare your, you? I, cancel your internet and, right. and we, you could we, feed uh, children for a year. We live in America. It's the most opulent. Is that the right word? Opulent, most overabundantly resourced country that's ever existed. I don't even think it's just it's like the way it's it's messed up because, as you were saying, grocery stores are even throwing out their shit. Like, whatever you guys are doing for entertainment purposes isn't the problem. When grocery stores and restaurants are throwing out Everything. pounds of food. Well, what, what I heard is that, and, uh, you know, this is something I heard, is that we have enough food on the planet yeah. to feed the planet. Right. It's just a logistics issue. Right. Like, if we can somehow move the corn <laughs> in this country mm-hmm. around the world at, right. you know... Basically, the thing that we need to solve world hunger is teleporters. That's where we're at. We <laughs> figure out teleportation. We can teleport I wonder all the corn to Africa. Things are good. There would be, so- as I understand it. <laughs> <laughs> that, it's that simple, you guys. God, there'd be so many weird like things happening with teleportation. Exist teleportation. The the clock. No, I'm not even gonna go there. I had a weird thought. I better not utter it. I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. Uh, why? Why do things happen when you make jokes? No, it's just embarrassing. It's okay. not that I'm going to get in trouble. I just want to embarrass Why, myself. Why, do you get in trouble? No. No? I'm okay. Okay. I mean, no, I, 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 I was listening outside. You're like, I don't want to talk about that. I've embarrassed uh. myself several times on this podcast. <laughs> I think that's the one thing when people become creators that they don't understand or they'll never really grasp is you got to do it. You got to go all into it. You got to have fun. You know, you got to... For lack of a better example, pull your pants up really high and take pictures of your gut. Like, you got to be all out there, everything, mm-hmm. and it stays there. Mm-hmm. Right. So, like, you can look, like, you could ask any creator. Like, I, I, I was a Viner also. Vine was, like, a, a big thing for me for a period of a year and a half. Like, huh. you go back, and if you had a Vine account, like, if you did, trust me. Like, it was, like, like you, to anyone, the content that you have to be comfortable leaving behind the trail of it right. is everyone will get embarrassed. <laughs> everyone will get in trouble. Everyone will do some fucked up shit. And right. if you ever get big enough, they'll go back uh-huh. and find some things yeah. you did in the past and make uh, make an issue out of it. And I just went and I looked at my my Vine as an example. And I was like, I am an unfunny piece of shit. Right. <laughs> I'm, like, well, I'm, I'm like deleting every single Vine. I was like, I can't believe I did this. The format of Vine was brutal in the yeah. similar way of YouTube, but that it's just, it requires you to be so fast paced. You got to make content. You got to slam it out. You can't ever think or work about on it too long. It, on the podcast, it's like, I sit here and I talk for, for hours and hours and hours. And of course I'm going to say and do some stupid ass shit. It's just inevitable. It's like I can't even try to avoid it. I just mm-hmm. have to embrace that I'm an embarrassing I think person. The, the, the biggest thing, and I think we've learned that even with like you know things in the in, in the recent past and stuff with creators is everyone's gonna fuck up. It's just how you handle it after that's the fact true. that's the most important part. Because I feel like what, what this society loves, American society loves, loves building someone up on a pedestal yeah. and making a big deal of them. But then we love knocking them off the pedestal yeah. and like clowning them. But then we also really love a comeback. Redemption. Which is why we're like, this guy's such a good singer. Oh my that's God, look at her face. That's terrible. And we're like, but he's a good singer again. You know, and, and, it's like kind of like. It's torturous to be in that position. It's hard to understand how, anyway, you know what, whatever, 
Let me ask you this. <laughs> um, so when you guys were making, <laughs> I sometimes I go down the rabbit hole. And I'm like, you know what? Let's not talk about this. <laughs> let's just fucking go somewhere else. Yeah, let's go. Take us there. <laughs> were there ever actual medical concerns that you guys had during the filming? Like I think back to Man vs. Food. You know the story of that show. Yeah. He was eating the gnarliest shit for so long. The doctors were like, you're going to die if you keep doing this. Yep. Was it ever, I mean, I know you were a potato in a mirror, but was, <laughs> was there any like actual That's actually the name of my autobiography. <laughs> yeah. Potato in the mirror. I just love that phrase. I can't <laughs> shake it. <laughs> potato in the mirror is an excellent autobiography. Thank you. It's a good cover, like a <laughs> good gonna, name of that I'm going to need you guys too. to write the foreword now. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> No, there was never any major food concerns. And I mean, if I can go deep on some theories for a second, you know, and I actually, I've met Adam Richman a few times, uh, mm-hmm. this guy, I never yeah. spoke about, about that specifically or anything <laughs> like that. But this is just my theory is once you've done three seasons of a show, you control a lot more if you are the talent on the show. Mm-hmm. So you kind of get like, <clears throat> you can get like kind of stepped on in your deal the first three seasons. But then like, you know, once you get to that point, it's like now. It is I who can make demands. Right. And you can make those demands. And I just feel if I had done three seasons of that show, I'd be like, hey, you know what I'm tired of getting? Really fat. Right. And I want to start paying for my trainer. And in fact, this in between this season and last season, I did start to make a better difference on my body. Mm-hmm. And I want to host other shows where, you know, mm-hmm. they want maybe a trimmer look. So other people eat now. Like, I'm off it. That's just it. I'm like, well, what are we going to do? Well, you could just say that I was going to die because I bet I would die. So you think that that's overhyped? I I think if I were him, I would have done that. I would have been like, okay, we're done now with this. We're done. Like, let's be honest. Do I really have to to die for people to? The answer is yes. Yeah, it is. Yes, of course. You do have to die. I want to watch you, specifically you, You, die. Yes, you. I've enjoyed your content. I think you're a great guy, Adam. I want to eat you. But I want nothing more than for you to slowly eat. I want. Boiling and hot. I, and on your funeral, I want to deep fry that coffin, <laughs> and for you to take a bite of it. Oh, that's actually an excellent epic meal. I right. want to fill his coffin with ground beef and nacho cheese. Oh, meat coffin, <laughs> guaranteed fifty thousand views. And then, <laughs> and if Adam Richmond's inside, I, sh- that's a meal. I want the service to be called potato in the grave. <laughs> <laughs> in the grave, like in the egg? grave, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know the creators. The creators. Saw, are you going potato to the creators? In the gravy. Potato in the gravy. Oh, oh shit. Let's fill the hole with gravy. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, that's yeah. my life. Sweet. You can move right. on. You go I'm ahead. gonna have you guys on a Halloween episode now next year. Potato in the gravy. Potato <laughs> gravy. <laughs> shit. The spookiest. Thing ever. Yeah, we'll just like you, if you don't like this episode, you gotta listen to this podcast from six months ago. Shredder <laughs> has this uncanny ability to always find the most uncomfortable place <laughs> to sit. <laughs> He's literally right where I would put my feet, and I don't know how to sit. He does this to Eli every morning. Not every morning, all night. He started doing this yeah. thing where he'll he'll we'll go to bed, and then he'll jump up on the bed and go right next to her pillow. Like next to her face, <laughs> just snuggled it up on her face. It starts by sleeping right next to me, and then somehow in the middle of the night, I wake up and I'm <laughs> completely like in the middle, no, and I'm no longer have my side. He's like your sleeping bed. sideways on my side. He just takes it over every night now. Oh, He's cute. Don't you want to kill him? Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> I wish he was less cute. It's like it's so cute that it's hard to complain. But I want to literally, I want to throw him through the window. He's so good. I was just, I was wondering, what is it, we were talking about it briefly, that, uh, what is that impulse that when cute, when you want to kill cute things, <laughs> you want to like squeeze them till they die. You're like, oh, you should die. What yeah, is that? Weird, eh? Just a weird thing. I don't know. You, I love it. Yeah. You're so adorable and so defenseless and so sweet. I want to we'll kill you. Kill you. Is it like something like, I could kill you because I'm so much more powerful than you are. You're, you are nothing. And I can, I don't know I can what kill is it, you. But you can see. Even Everyone like, feels it, right? Yeah, like you can see an ant would say to a baby, oh, I want to squeeze him, right? Like yeah. everyone would say that. Yeah. They, they won't say, I want to kill you, but. No, but that's the but impulse that's is the, to, 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 to squeeze destroy it, just in to a way. Squeeze it until yeah. it's completely obliterated. Cute. Oh, somebody said, Ian, he said it's cute aggression. 
Yeah. Can you get me a Wikipedia on the cute aggression? Give me a link. Yeah, to that. I actually, so I recall uh, an cute explain aggression. like uh, an explain like I'm five went up at one point, and I was just like, oh, interesting. But it was at mm. one of those points where I didn't click it. I was like, I'm in a gift mood, so I didn't click it. Mm. But now I wish I did. So I'd be like, well, actually, yeah. <laughs> Wait, this is playful aggression, not cute. Okay. Uh, superficial aggressive behavior. Superficial. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Human baby or young animal. People Grit their teeth, playful. clench their fists, or feel the urge to pinch and squeeze something they consider cute while not actually causing or intending to cause any harm. Just really wanting to cause harm. Playful aggression is a type of dysmorphous display in which positive experience elicits expressions usually associated with negative emotion. This behavior occurs more commonly in individuals who experience... What is... Demorphous emotions across a range of. This is how you go down a hole, then you click demorphous. This article sucks. <laughs> I was kind of hoping for an explanation. They're just like, yeah, man, you want to kill cute things. We all know about it. Like, not, <laughs> it is a thing that inside. exists. No, it's true. <laughs> it exists. Um, last year, we were both at Creator Summit. YouTube like, Illuminati you, yeah. secret meeting. Yeah, exactly. Are you going mm. this year? No. Are you? No. No. Did you get invited? Yes. Oh, I was not invited. I think it might be because I, I shouted at everyone. <laughs> I was gonna I think it might be. I was gonna ask you last year <laughs> you were there, and that was right after like the whole uh, apocalypse. apocalypse. It was as soon as as soon as uh, <clears throat> as soon as uh, the six companies like pulled their ads because yeah. they found that their ads were playing in front of like weird YouTube yeah. videos that they didn't they weren't happy about. I don't remember what it was we were screaming about. Almost. I remember very clearly. What did no, you, I but, remember just I'll tell you exactly. there was no communication with creators, well, this no was, information. Yeah, that's that was my follow-up point. But my main question was, like, like I said, I used to make Vines, and Vine ended. Vine was an app, and it ended. I saw people, like, people existed that, you know, were like, you know what it felt like when you were on the rise? You're like, hey, he, I think it's going to be all right, this YouTube thing. It's starting to come through now. You know, like you had that feeling and it's like, whoa, let's buy a better camera or a laptop. There's an investment aspect there where you're going to double down on this career. But there were people, I'm sure, on Vine that were like, wow, I just got 150,000 followers. I'm going to move to Los Angeles. And they right. booked a plane, quit their job, and then they heard Vine was dead. Mm -hmm. Right. That must have happened. Mm -hmm. And we didn't hear about these stories because obviously no one gives a shit about Vine or the people that use it. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? Got him. Uh, hey, idiot. Do it to him. <laughs> so, what happened was I felt that YouTube, like, is no different from Vine in many respects, in the sense that it's like, you know, we put all our eggs in the YouTube basket and we hope that YouTube will work out and that if you have a career, you have a career and that's great. But I just found out that these companies can just close. Like they, like they could be like, whoopsies, <laughs> we're not doing this anymore. So my question was to YouTube, if one company can complain about one instance of a bad ad being on a bad video, that six, it was the number was six, I believe, six companies can pull away and it affects all money making across the entire site. Mm -hmm. I needed to know how many companies control the fate of YouTube. Right. Mm -hmm. What if eight companies backed out? Do we close YouTube? Right. What if 10 back out? Do we close YouTube? And since we're in a room of 200 people that dedicate their time and their money and their effort to making a life on YouTube, which YouTube capitalizes on as well, mm -hmm. we should know if it's like, hey guys, things are much more fragile than you think. Mm -hmm. right. right. And and we got that. I already found out how fragile it was. It was as fragile as Pepsi can be like, that sucks, uh, the, that ad going on that video. So we're pulling money off all of YouTube and so are these other companies. And YouTube's like, wait, wait, we totally agree. We totally agree. The problem Let's was talk how about it. the problem was how submissive they were to these advertisers. Yeah, right? it's 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 all you're talking about influence. Yeah. And in an influence like scenario, you have infinite influencer ammo in this room, just mm -hmm. this room, let alone everyone else. Right, you know, that's people true. like mm -hmm. PewDiePie weren't even in that room, mm -hmm. but like who still is a guy that lives and breathes oh, YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And 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 my positioning was, how many companies back out until this whole thing shuts down? And they're like, well, there was just this one scenario, and this is what what bothered me was Robert had said he was like, uh, you know, Harley, put yourself in the shoes 
of the Pepsi executive that had to go and explain it. And I jumped in and I don't know what his point was going to be, but I was like, I'm sorry. I, I apologize, but we only have one time where we get you guys face to face. And I would love to say, hey, I love YouTube. Thanks so much for changing my life for the better. By the way, they ran off stage right after that, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, well, the whole point is like, and I've been through these things before. They're, it, it's so cool. They show us a great time. But really, if you look at it, you just need to see that we go to this, you know, su- secret YouTube awesome meeting. We get there. They have this face to face. And he was like, well, imagine the Pepsi executive that had to explain to his Superior. I'm like, I don't give a fucking shit about that guy. Yeah. That guy makes six figures. There are people in this room with popular channels that will not make six figures because they invest back into their channel. Mm-hmm. And maybe someone spent $15,000 that week on their biggest video of the year. Mm-hmm. And there was no ads mm-hmm. and no one told them, but yeah. people at YouTube knew that that was going to happen. And this Pepsi exec or whoever knew that that was going to happen, but we didn't know. We didn't get the heads up. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Epic Mealtime was never affected by the adpocalypse. But the reason why I think YouTube fucked up is because I made more money on Facebook last month. Seriously. On Epic Mealtime than really? I did on YouTube. Wow. And that's, bro, that's I, I can't even get Facebook deal. monetization. We'll have to talk about it. They this. won't even fucking get, they won't even throw it's me a bone. It's not far. Not that I care. We don't even like, upload our videos there. But do, how many views do you get on, let's, on Facebook? Let's discuss that. I have like some, like we have like one video we put up and it was like, you know, a, a, a recut of an older video and it got over 30 million views, Dude, you know? Dude, Facebook uh, is crazy. Yeah, it is. You know what Facebook is but crazy? But it's your type there. of content, for example, that <clears throat> would really go viral. I can see that. Yeah. Our yeah so what like, we do is like we take our old content, we take content that exists, we take out all of our faces, we take out the voice, we take out any context that would have timed it, mm. and we make it just becomes like the most epic lasagna. Mm. Interesting. Instead of it starting off with me at the fast yeah. food being like, well, I'd like to do it. It's like, you know, cut out literally every single person. That's so you're playing it. Recut it. You, you yeah. got to Sometimes yeah. we put it in square How format. We're like, lol, who made this? <laughs> and put emojis and like literally throw you it back the out game. there. God. Yeah, it, we play the game. And you know what? I never played the YouTube game game. Mm-hmm. I never got into playing the YouTube game. I feel like the game didn't even exist when you guys were at your peak. Like mm-hmm. the game kind of came around on YouTube. After on YouTube. A hundred, a hundred, of a hundred percent it did. Dude, there was no game then. The biggest, it was just I was talking about this video. with, uh, yeah. with Freddie Wong actually. The, the biggest mm-hmm. game then was just like, there were categories. So it was like, they would say like food mm-hmm. and like one video was shown that day on food, top mm-hmm. of food, comedy, entertainment, movies. And like if another YouTuber uploaded in food, it's like, yo, what the fuck, bro? You're uploading in my category? That's like, really fucked up, dude. I thought, you know, like if You're Tim DeLaghetto if Tim DeLaghetto uploaded in food, I'd be like, that's weird, bro. I don't know how you feel if I started uploading in entertainment. Right. Like, then what would happen? You don't want a Jewish fucking <laughs> warrior yeah. showing up at your crib, bitch. <laughs> I'd be throwing down a King David's era. Jewish warrior sounds so just not intimidating Way at all. Cooler. <laughs> Jewish, Jewish bla- warrior. It like... sounds a lot better than potato in the mirror. <laughs> yeah, it does. But I feel like Jewish lo- uh, warrior is just a lawyer. That's basically... Jewish lawyer. That's yeah, funny. just a Jewish warrior is just a lawyer. <laughs> Jewish lawyer, yeah. lawyer. Um, but I was, I, I was annoyed. Yeah. And, and to that point about the YouTube Illuminati secret meaning thing, like if you look at it. I love YouTube. Mm-hmm. I really do. And I'll probably always have, uh, if YouTube's existing, I will upload to YouTube. But there's a fuck up when there are articles out there being like, this guy makes $500,000 every month playing video games online on a service called Twitch. Yeah. And you know, that's a YouTube fuck up because you can make, you could do bigger than that on YouTube. Mm-hmm. In a millisecond, people do, they exist, but no one wants to talk about YouTube as much. It's not exciting news. It's Mm -hmm. like, you know what I mean? It's like, we just, we bash YouTube, you know, we don't, the the media. It's cool to hate on YouTube. Yeah, exactly. It's been for a long, long time. Yeah. But now Um, it's even in like the mainstream media. That's what I noticed. Like if you're talking about Twitch and how much money people make on Twitch, it's like, that must be like a YouTube fuck up because they should be mentioning it on YouTube, but they don't. And that's interesting in itself. The management, the company has become so unsexy. They're just a bunch of fucking, the people. Whatever. I'm, I've bitched about YouTube so much, but, but like, it, 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 you're it's, right. It's, it's true. You it's make true. a good they're, point that it's missing. not sexy. Why didn't Drake stream Fortnite on YouTube? That's a big mm-hmm. deal. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. And it, by the way, we're on Twitch right now. If we, oh, yeah, that's right. If yeah. we were on our podcast channel streaming, the numbers would be way higher. Mm-hmm. But it's better on Twitch. Yeah. I don't, it just feels better. The experience is better. The audience are more engaged. The Twitch audience community, because I, I made a Twitch channel as well, and I noticed that Twitch is a different audience. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you know what? Like, we put our Facebook videos up. Facebook is its own audience as yes. well. Yeah. Big time. <laughs> like, Facebook <laughs> yeah. Facebook can, like... Should Facebook, we Facebook is its own planet. A hundred percent. A million percent. Facebook is, like... 
our content doesn't. Feel here's how. Facebook. Here's how I'll explain no, Facebook. No, you would have to regear it like they do, where you like right, cut out but like our everything content that makes sense. Is, yes and no. You just cut out everything. If that's I were you guys, funny and I would. Good I would. Do, <laughs> <laughs> I would keep it the boat. I would keep it exactly oh, as sorry, it would. Literally, you just take your video. It's basically a 10 second video of you with like 100 beanies on. Uh, and it's like, look how many hats, haha, <laughs> and loop it. Yeah, we can't, can't do that. that. We can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Facebook's money, you know what should probably make Joey Salads, God bless his soul, <laughs> was like, I'm killing it on Facebook. Yeah. And YouTube won't even pay for me. I don't know. He doesn't make it. He's just getting demonetized every time. Well, on, As he should. On be, Facebook. <laughs> on Facebook. I yeah. just kidnapped another <laughs> lesbian couple's mixed, <laughs> uh, mixed child. <laughs> and broke a trump car Facebook the thing about Facebook is like if you look at it this way is the biggest youtuber has like 63 million subscribers, right? Yes, it's a huge deal like the number one like 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 uh, that I could think of just in the food space just in food is like tasty and they have 96 million likes on Facebook It's real interesting and then you go look at some sports teams that have like or 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 soccer players that have like a hundred something million mm -hmm. and if they upload and it's a video native to Facebook. Facebook's like, oh yeah, we love right. video content. We want to be vi video players in the video game. So yeah. let's push that, push that video, push that video. Like I, I have a friend who put up a video, one video, it got 180 million views. And then he got 500,000 likes on his Facebook page. First video, one time Bro. within a week. YouTube has not in forever done that to a no. channel or someone or anything, but that's- Not really, yeah. The biggest thing is like, let's say you started a channel and I started a channel and we did it on Facebook. The biggest thing is we could share each other's channel. Right. I remember when I was mm -hmm. negotiating the peace between Joey and SoFlo, they were right. negotiating Cause, shares. Because SoFlo owed <laughs> Joey shares. Couple shares and he never paid up. Well, what anyway, happened? I did feel he like, pay up? Yeah, he, yeah, we he broke did, but he did a night share when he should have done a day <laughs> Yo, share. Yo, it was buttered that he got a night share, but he's like, you know what? It's fine. Um, I, Facebook's still the Wild West. I feel like they're going to start. Something's got to happen there because it's just too insane what's going on there. But my my page is dead because they just favor con video content so much, like short form snappy video content with like crying laughing emojis everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> that are like if you post a picture or a status update or anything, it's like a link ten to people saw this. Yeah, I think what would do very well is highlights of the podcast with huh. with mm -hmm. uh, interesting. Uh, it's this is the most important part subtitles. Whoa, if that's you, a really good idea. Hey, Dan, if you write have that the down. Subtitles, if you have the subtitles, it changes. Facebook, so here's the thing. You go on Facebook, and it, it's just three seconds counts as a view, and they don't have to have the sound running, which is dirty. So when it's like <laughs> 180 million views, yeah. it's like 179 million people that scrolled by just didn't scroll by fast enough. Right. <laughs> um, and it plays without sound, and if you have subtitles, Interesting. people do it because people. a lot of people watch during class. Mm. They're in class. Dude, you and they got want all to the watch. hot tips. Yeah, exactly. I knew you were gonna come in here with some crazy <laughs> no, knowledge. Coming Dan, write that, that fire, down. Ian, coming everybody that get fire. on that. I want ten. I, uh, I want ten highlights on our channel. We need someone. We need someone Quit. captioning that shit. And Quit. we're going four uploads a day. I have a. Right, I have team? a disgusting feeling that if we start posting those, it's gonna be. It's gonna be sick. You're gonna post and you're gonna make. Oh, look at this. Now our lives. Have but changed. I don't. I'm not. We have Facebook lives now. Can you hook up monetization? Uh, I can try. I can connect you to a person. I've done that with two of my friends. Okay. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Hook me up. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they got monetized, but I hooked them up with the person. Right. That's it. Yeah. What do you got? Speaking of potato in the mirror, what do you got there? My pizza in a bag? <laughs> pizza in a bag. <laughs> <and> potato <laughs> in the mirror? Yeah. This is pizza in a bag. <laughs> it's my jerky. <laughs> I have a jerky. So, okay. You know what's crazy? It looks is I, really I, good, though. I made, Can you really tell yeah, us about it? it? Yeah, well, it's so crazy because I made... Let's hold it here. Hey, guys, look. It's available in Walmart. Um, I, like... People are just like, yo, did you ever expect Epic Meal Time, man, to do all this and be <laughs> like, you know? And I'm always like, no, I was joking. <laughs> like, I literally made a video where I was joking around. Mm -hmm. And it got views, and I'm like, oh, let's joke again next week. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, haha, we're joking, man. I can't believe we're still joking. Mm -hmm. And then it's like six years later, I'm like, yo, this joke's really heavy on my soul. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it keeps going. Then I'm like, seven years later, I'm like, I have, I have found yeah. the reasons internally within myself why this joke will always be funny to me <laughs> and why I should value this joke. Oh and I'll continue to joke with this joke forever. And I got to that place and I'm like, where can we take this joke? Snack aisle Walmart. That's where we brought the joke. It's so, funny, it's called Super Snack Time. 
<laughs> That's cool. Epic meal time. Let me let me break into this. I want to eat it. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> it's it's called super snack time because epic meal time. This is the craziest thing. Is copyrighted. Whoa, was this ch- is a fucking. This wait, is just wait, a what? gnarly. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> That's not seasoning. Don't so hold that. on, hold on. It's copyrighted. Yeah, so hold on, uh, hold on, uh, hold on. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Imagine. So okay, I didn't expect this. It's little pepperonis. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> oh my god. And I swear to God, you could be a hundred percent honest. If you don't like it, you could say it's not. It's not good. You could. You could say that. Be everything. You want me to give you a real review right now? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Be truthful. Okay. Well, it like on, pizza. on first. On first. Doesn't it taste like? It shocked yeah. me. I'm not gonna lie. It's like a mass of meat. That's like, it looks like a potato in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> so that shocked me. But like, okay. So visually, it's interesting. But then I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. It looks like pepperoni. Yeah. Well, they are. It's pepperoni. Nice They're pepperonis. Snack. I find that that jerky is like hmm. sometimes dry or tough. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Right. It is. I don't, I'm done with that gas station shit. So I was like, let's change the game. Let's bring in this pizza flavor, which I was surprised pizza doesn't exist. This is gnarly, dude. That's really cool. This is like a little shot of life. <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it crazy? It's actually pretty good, right? I've never had yeah. anything like it. No, I, I, I swear I was like, I was shocked that a triangle bag doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. The, <laughs> the pizza jerky itself doesn't exist. And it doesn't taste healthy. Like Can I say said... that? Yeah, 100% you could say that. It doesn't taste healthy. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's well, yeah, high it's... protein. And low carbs. So remember, I was telling you about keto. Mm-hmm. If you sat down and you had like, I'm still eating it by the way. If you had six, <laughs> by kill it. If you had six slices of of bacon and three eggs for breakfast, it, you know people would be like, "Oh, cholesterol. That's not really healthy." That's in line with a keto diet, though. So mm-hmm. if you wanted, this is the best way to eat pizza if you're on a keto, because <laughs> your other option mm. is making a cauliflower pizza, and that's mm. just fucking stupid. I gotta say, I mean, I'm. I'm eating it. I'm still eating it. Fuck. What are these little nuggets here? They look like raisins glued to it. <laughs> we glued that? raisins to our jerky. <laughs> what is it? What are the chunks? They're so it's like it's marinated and seasoned. Mm. So those look like, like olive. Those are like delicious little like sauce pouches that you mm. got there. You just like it's basically when you get a chip and it has extra powder on it. You got lucky with that bite. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How do you tell me? <laughs> it looks like a raisin glued is, on there. Is this is this a? <laughs> I think it's really good. Here, let me read the packaging. I I agree about the texture. It is not dry. Like you know what I'm jer- talking about. Yeah, they I'm, have that tough jerky. I'm not jerky. a fan of jerky usually because of that. I love jerky. Yeah. I'm a jerky guy. I'm just gonna be frank with all you right now about my life. <laughs> so yeah, I was gonna call it Epic Meal Time Pizza in a bag, but I found out uh, a a huge I like food I company. A, Let, a, a huge. I want to hear the story. <laughs> a huge food company <laughs> trademarked Epic Meal Time in the food space in 2012. How the fuck? Whoa! And it wasn't you. No, it wasn't us. Did you combat that? It, yeah, but then you just have to. I have to just spend a lot of money against this, mm-hmm. like literally, like it's like a mega corporation. Can you say who it was? I don't even want to. That's how big they are. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> There's like five of their products on this table right now. They're just like that serious. On this table. Oh. No, not them. What sneaky little cocksuckers? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, very <laughs> sneaky big cocksuckers. Mm. Uh. These were like big cocksuckers. Mm big ones you know but actually it was like my first lesson it's just like in like i was like america <laughs> i love it i it. love it good call guys <laughs> well, that's so, well that played. so sneaky yeah okay i'm gonna say i endorse it it's great <laughs> sweet it's fun it's interesting i've never seen anything like it before it's tasty it's I a love little wild package. a little weird it's really cool yeah we i it's 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 so crazy because I've p- I've pitched shows before, like doing this whole thing. I've gone in and done show pitches. Like I've I've been there, like waiting, like in like you know the the hall of like this huge production company, being like, I hope they like this show, and going in there and mm-hmm. doing a little song and dance. Um, but it was just interesting with this because I went to Walmart to pitch it, and that was just different in oh, itself. Oh, so you did it directly with Walmart? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I own this. Mm-hmm. It's not like a licensed one. Like this is like this is. How the hell do you make a food? Did they help you? Like how do you make? Yes, food? that's a jerky company that makes the jerky, mm-hmm. and they, they partnered with them. Yeah, and they make a jerky that's a delicious jerky. Mm. And uh, Walmart. Are you telling me not to chew in the mic? Either? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> and uh, oh, I'm sorry, Shredder. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you try this, Elo? I did. I don't like eating on the podcast, but I did like. <laughs> well, I'm a this. fucking. I'm a big, disgusting monster. And that, that is why we look like we look. Yeah. 
Thank you for saying it proverbially, so it hurts less. This is how we look. <laughs> no, I, and I look skinny, you know? I mean, oh my God. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I'm and not. that is why you're gonna die young, and I'm me and Shredder are gonna live on happily after That's your not what I after you're in a gravy grave. <laughs> All right, where were we? Sidetracked. Uh, I was saying that I was standing up at YouTube, and I was like, "Fuck y'all for taking away the money." Yeah. From all the people, How do you think and they were like, "We put up a blog post." I know. And I was like, "It's the same blog post if you have 75 subscribers or 7 million subscribers." Yeah, and they were can like, you, "Can we appreciate the irony of YouTube communicating through blog posts?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, how you guys know what you're doing? <laughs> Y'all are in touch. And then, and then the best part is, and, and, and guys, if you're watching this and you do get to go to the the, the beautiful uh, YouTuber Illuminati secret meeting, um, which I do love YouTube. Also, I can say I love YouTube, but it's important to criticize it. Um, it was fun. I was watching a Superwoman video, and for like seven minutes, she was like, "YouTube's the best. I love YouTube. It's so good." And she went on about how great YouTube is. Then she was like, "But," <laughs> and it's like she had to do that before she criticized it. So, six minutes of praising YouTube ahead of this, you know. But like, how fucking dumb. And they bring us there, and they're like, "Sorry, we took all the money away for a week without telling anyone." Now, can you go on stage and dance right. and dance to hype up Ellen's YouTube channel and to I hype know. up James Corden's YouTube channel? And now yeah. you go to like YouTube trending, and you're like, "Oh, great, YouTube, this is it." TV leftovers from last night, right. Ellen segment, James Corden segment, and it's like I'm not bashing them, although I could bash Ellen for a, a long time. I'm just saying you look at this top ten list of people, mm -hmm. and it's just could TV you, leftovers. Could you bash Ellen for a long time? Oh my God! <laughs> Tell me about Ellen. I, I sense you that ever, there's something so you there. You ever You ever watch? <laughs> I <laughs> love that. I've watched Ellen. Ellen. I've started watching Ellen. I I got on the treadmill recently, and I flip on Ellen just out of curious. I'm just curious what's out there. But I've watched so I've watched a couple episodes recently, and I'd love to hear all of your all of your grievances. <laughs> well, see, so you guys actually touched upon it in one of the videos, something that I do bring up. Then oh, that yeah, was the girl. The it's like, oh, look at you! Yeah. Hey, you had to steal, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And for those that don't know, she 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 set up a ruse that would totally encourage someone to steal an extra hat. Or it's garbage, Ellen Bar Mitzvah merch. It's, <laughs> it's not merch. even good. Yeah, let's it's fucking like four dollars nonsense. Coming from yeah. like a shit. multi billion. It's yeah, not like, like the Oprah gives cars, stole. so don't get fucking high and mighty that <laughs> someone took two hats. Yeah. And she so this everyone could take one thing, and someone took two things. Yeah. And she was like, "Oh, my sister." And Ellen's like, "Oh, you don't think we all have sisters?" Right, everyone? Wouldn't we all like two things? Everyone's they, like, yeah, they start, like, one, throwing two. Shit Practically, they almost. If she said, in the corner. if she was like, kill her, <laughs> fucking kill her, yeah. everyone would go and tear that woman yeah. to pieces for Ellen and be like, oh, we get a hat for this. <laughs> and we don't know if like maybe her sister was supposed to come. She filled in for her sister. Maybe her sister's sick. We don't fucking know. Yeah. But I'll tell you what I know. I know that Ellen, Ellen's like a, a, a billionaire. She is. You know, she's got her like slot machine level. She got her own slot machines in Ellen Vegas. Has slot machines. Yeah, and and so she's <laughs> How there. How are you gonna criticize uh -huh. someone for stealing a hat when you got slot exactly. machines? Exactly. You're stealing hope! Exactly. And so she's there and she's like, oh, look at this girl. And it's like, oh, wow, Ellen, you know, you're a billionaire and this girl's like a peasant stealing two hats. Let's shame her on TV. What, what, what is the Ellen slot machine like? When you lose, does it be like, you took two hats, you lose your turn? <laughs> It is, it is. It actually says claim prize or claim both prizes. If you claim both you prizes, like, ass. you get nothing. You it, a webcam turns on and, and streams and, and, your and face. Ellen like, pops up, you lying bitch. <laughs> but like, is there sorry, other, Ellen, what else that not there? everyone's a billionaire. Dan sent but you a picture a, of it. Another one. Oh, Dan sent me something about Ellen. Uh, another one was uh, the, the, you know, Damn Daniel? Yeah. Yes. So Damn Daniel, okay? Let's say you're the, the Damn Daniel. Okay, and I'm other guy that says damn Daniel. Oh, I got to some pics of Ellen's. Oh, man. Oh, my God. It's, it's about dancing. Of course. Come on. All right, sorry to pull that up. and Everybody, you can open your eyes again. Mm. <laughs> so, let's say you're Daniel. Yep. And you just came to school in your white vans. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm here with my $600 iPhone, and I'm like... Damn, Daniel, back at it again with the way, you know, and I do that. And you're like, ha shut up. And then I'm like, damn, Daniel, every day. Damn, Daniel, damn, Daniel. Right. Okay, now if we just black and white it, you are the star. This wouldn't exist without the star. Mm -hmm. However, this other kid, you know, he bought this iPhone and he uses his data and he is the guy saying, damn, Daniel. Mm -hmm. Like that is his phrase. You know, so I would say that they're equal in this scenario. I would say that damn, Daniel's the artist. 
the guy making He's it. the creator. Yes, and this is just the star. Yeah. This is the main actor. Well, the, and this guy this guy's the director, the writer, the yeah, producer, and distributor. It's his, it's his creative work. Right. So let's just yeah. split it half half. Let's okay, say they're sure. Okay, they both go on Ellen. She gives that guy, Daniel, mm -hmm. a lifetime supply of vans. He's mm. already got some slick new shoes. You know, but he now he has a lifetime supply. This guy, the friend that came with him, a surfboard that says I went on the Ellen show. Was she trying to be rude to him? I think no. She wasn't trying to be rude to him. What she's trying to do, in my opinion, is subtly place the seeds for uh, a treacherous backstabbing of these friends Bring down them the back line. back in a year. Uh, these kids, Explosive are they're not episode. friends anymore. Uh -huh. No way. And she, now He's like, oh yeah? Daniel, why don't you just do it with your vans that you have a lifetime supply of? And all I got is this fucking surfboard. <laughs> and he's like, bro, you were always jealous of my white vans. That's why you <laughs> filmed me in the beginning. And then they fight each other. Who knows? But you know what I mean? So she's breaking up friendship. That's what I think. What, and a, like, na what a nasty witch. How, how, is it hard? Her fans is are it, crazy, by the way. Is if they it see hard? this, we're done. <laughs> Whatever, <laughs> you know. Whatever. I got scared for a millisecond. I thought you were like, I fought, oh shit! I fought. I, I fought. I forgot I about fought the K -pop, I fought K-pop fan base. You're I, K. I thought you were a K-pop fan. I, every day I fight for that. For that. <laughs> oh, you fought against the haters. I fight against. And I fight against K-pop fans. Wait, I thought you were for K-pop. I am. That's well, how fucked up so these kids are. So what's going on? There's still more in the K-pop Tell me about the K-pop landscape. Story? I like. I like. I like some K-pop bands, some yeah. boy bands. I yeah. find them, I find them mesmerizing, the shit again. fascinating, and I think that they're the pinnacle of money spent on pop music and designer clothes. Mm -hmm. And it's like they're born and bred, like they're like Spartans, except instead of kicking ass, they're a boy band. Right. They're born from the beginning, and like they throw other other kids, like other Koreans, in the garbage that just don't have the look. They're like, nope, in the trash, in the trash. This one, the pop singers do that. The, the, they're, they're, if you thought the Backstreet Boys were corporate chills, you have no idea what it's like in, in what, Korea. What, I thought you loved them just like five seconds ago. I do love them. But you just call them corporate chills. Sometimes when you talk <laughs> about something like, in a way, it, it sounds worse than it, it is in, in real life. <laughs> you know, like, like this, this, in this one, this one video, this one video on YouTube, this guy Max describes Ric Flair and he's like, his skin is, he's like, he looks like leather and he's this weird old goober and he's so gross and he's fucking awesome. And it's true. Some things He's just everything. sound worse right. when they're explained. But when you really, when you take it in, yeah, these guys are nothing but, you know, they're, they're corporate chills. They're, okay. They're, but you they're, love they're, them all the they're, same. They're, yeah, they're the best. Okay. Um, <laughs> right. I get you. I yeah. understand. So they, uh, they, they're just born and bred to be the best at this. And this is a very specific thing. They're groomed. It, exactly. To be in a boy band. Right. Um, and uh, their fans are very territorial mm. and uh i i like some fans bases and other fan bases don't mix well and i went once and i was like oh like i'm like i love bts haha -ha, my boys are so sick and i you know this one's my favorite and then literally people were like you fucking stupid jar mayonnaising and slit your throat if you think you could be fan of bts they fucking oh hate white God. people fuck you and i was like whoa this is really intense and they're like can't be Did that come can't be Koreans racist to white, white people, people bitch I, I actually I, I screenshot so many people all all different Death types threats? all different walks of life on twitter being like, you fucking scumbag, if you think you'll be a fan of BTS, I'll kill you. <laughs> I swear. And I'm like, dude, that's crazy. And, and, I'm like, dude, and they I, I, they kept sending me pictures of like jars of mayonnaise crying. Why? Why a jar I'm of white. mayonnaise? Oh. Because I'm white. So You're I'm, sad, I'm sad mayonnaise. mayonnaise. Boy. <laughs> I'm sad mayo boy. <laughs> Whoa, the and I was like, that's are ruthless. I was like, I that's that, racist. And, they, and they were like, like fuck yeah, it's racist. They were like, no, they're like, no, you can't be racist to white people, you fucking idiot. Oh. And I was like, what? I'm like, people think that. And then I went, look, I'm like, oh, this is just completely interesting. On, on so many levels, dude. I kind of want to get into K-pop now. Yeah. Uh, yo, I got I got like a list for you. I got like a start, like a list of places. <laughs> it's for like you to I don't go. care about the music. I'm just interested in the beef. <laughs> yeah, and once you just go out there, I, I got just like, like if if you went up right now and you're like huge, I'm a huge fan of Jungkook. Like you'll see your mentions are going to change. <laughs> Who with Jungkook? Yeah, J U N G K O O K. You write that, and that sounds like that's a Korean pop. That sounds like a cowboy. Yeah, <laughs> it's so weird. It's like a twist, but it's, I bet if you see it they spelled, us, they're gonna hear us, dude. They're at, they're throwing mayonnaise through the window right now. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, and, and I just I was like, oh yeah, this is awesome. And people were like, I'm gonna fucking kill you. I swear <laughs> they went crazy. I on the surface value, it's like, oh, that's wholesome. Everyone's having fun and singing and dancing, and then underneath, 
it's just stabbing. Like, don't I ever first. So obviously what I did was I was like, well, in that case, I guess I'm going to be the fan club president. Mm -hmm. So like my bio has said fan club president for like the last like six oh, months. God. And I'll randomly get messages being like, yo, Mr. President, can I be in the BTS fan club? And I'm like, oh, hey, just God. wanting to be in the club gets you access to the club. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> uh, and I had some website like wrote an article being like Harley Warnstein from Epic Meal Time is the <laughs> is the BTS <laughs> fan club president. And it was like literally like written on this like Korean website. And I was just like, oh, shit, this is actually true and fucking weird. It's not only was it weird that I was wearing a K-pop t-shirt with uh, like a young man's face on it, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I was at Dave and Buster's, which is also weird. I was having a weird night <laughs> and uh, someone tapped me on the shoulder and it was this like young girl and I turned around and she goes, are you the BTS fan club president? And I, I swear to God, and I unzipped my jacket where I had the picture of me no. and I was like, yeah. And she went, it is you. She stabbed Can me I get stomach. a picture? <laughs> no, oh she was a nice God. one at least. Yeah. So she recognized you as the fan club leader. Yeah. Wow. Well, I was like, damn, serious brand pivot working out for yeah. me. <laughs> Who saw that coming? Yeah. Um, I got a couple of videos. You want to watch some videos? Yeah, I would love to. I've got, um, did you hear about this Count Dankula shit? The dog, that, the yeah, Nazi dog? Yeah. 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 If you, guys, you guys probably mostly heard about this, but I'll show you a little clip. Yeah. I haven't actually had a chance to talk about this. I've been meaning to talk about it for a long time. This guy trained his girlfriend's pug. She's always... She's always, you know, doting over this pug, saying I was the cutest thing. Doting? Is that a word? Did I say that right? Whatever. You guys know what I mean. I know Loves the damn dog. Yeah. And the do he taught the dog how to heil Hitler. This video just got demonetized. The Our algorithm's video. like, uh -huh. <laughs> algorithm's like, hell Hitler? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here's the video. But anyway, he got locked up in the UK. So that's a happy Girlfriend ending. Girlfriend is always ranting and raving about how cute and adorable her wee dog is. <laughs> And so I thought I would turn them into the least cute thing that I could think of, which is a Nazi. Buddha. So here you can hear him saying it's the least cute yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A Nazi. Yeah. Not glory to Hitler, all you know. And the weirdest thing is is like like he said that he he thinks it's not cute. He thinks Nazis are not cute. So now he's talking about it and he's established his side of it. Yeah. But he doesn't yeah. think Nazis are cute. So then we are, we're, 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 you know, we are remembering the Nazis, which is an important thing. Right. We should remember that that's a fucked up time. That's true. And we should remember it. And if we remember it through joking or whatever, let's do that. But he started it off by saying <laughs> this, you know, and like, actually remember the, the, I hate Jewish people, PewDiePie thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. I always thought that that entire video would be in completely different and changed if he actually right off the bat said it. And I just want to say, I do mm. not hate Jewish people right. and then went through with it. Right. It means something so different. And I've watched this and I've gone over this before, Right. but like, it's really important that he paused there. Cause he said, I thought of the least yeah, cute thing. No, yeah. That context he is super put, important. Exactly. He yeah. put him where he is. Yeah. I feel like it seems so logical to anyone. Right? Everyone that we would talk to seems to be on the same page. I just don't understand what is going so, on. So, well, so let me basically, I mean, I thought it was pretty funny. I was giggling to myself Thank as I watched this. He says, gas the Jews and all that good stuff. And the dog Thank hiles you. Hitler. Let me find one. Because it takes him a minute to train the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that's funny. The pug's a Nazi. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'll say the the <laughs> accent is too spooky. He goes a little too German on the accent. It gives me like <laughs> too real. But what I'll say is like okay. So in the UK, apparently you're not allowed to make Nazi jokes, and they're actually sentenced his ass. They're gonna throw him in the slammer for a for a joke. He's gonna be in jail. Yeah. How he's gonna be every day. He's gonna be in jail. He's like I fucking cannot believe that I'm in jail. And for every person, that's like, what are you in for? Well, I'm <laughs> assuming that they do that from the movies. Yeah, that's yeah, what like, you Honestly, for. I taught a pug <laughs> to salute Hitler. And then privately, like, this guy's a violent racist. And, like, and then you <laughs> fucking killed There's his. There's no way. And you killed, yeah. who would you kill? Yeah, exactly. No, I literally, I taught this <laughs> Well, my, my reaction is, I don't know what the laws are. And I'm not English. I don't know what it's like to grow up there. But I, I'll say this. It made me appreciate this God-blessed land of the free, where free speech is a ten. Like, we... Free speech is an actual right that we have, and that would never ever happen here in America. And you, and it's crazy to think that even in UK, the birth of civilization, someone can go to prison for something so insane, and it makes you really appreciate what it means to to live in America. And 
I, I gotta Very say, much. this is what's what's interesting to me is, <laughs> let's say I taught you how to kill someone. I just showed you how to kill. Showed you how the fastest way to kill someone with a knife, and I showed you and I trained you for a year on how to kill someone. Mm -hmm. And then you went and killed someone. Right? Right. You did the crime. Yes. But maybe I should go to jail too. Maybe. Right? But it, it was you. Mm -hmm. You should be punished. Mm -hmm. I don't like the idea of this guy going to jail at all. But if you really want to black and white it, that dog's a Nazi. That what are we going to do with that Nazi dog? <laughs> yeah. What do we do with it? Right. We got a dog out there that will hail Hitler, right. that watches Nazi propaganda. The guy's locked up, but he knows the difference. Does the dog know? No. <laughs> and what's messed up to me is, I hate to say it, but like you follow that logic, you got to put that dog down. We have to put that dog down. Yeah. Well, it's not that I want to see that, but if you're going to continue the crime, you have to gas that dog. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not justice. You really do. I would and like to see the police want, gas that dog. And I don't want that, but like, you know what? Like, if you don't think that anything should happen to that dog, then you <laughs> shouldn't, and nothing should happen to that guy. Absolutely. <sighs> I can't believe we're talking about killing your dogs move, now. Your move, your move, UK. This is, we started off talking about killing dogs. Yeah, <laughs> right. I think we should end it. <laughs> we'll, wait, we'll make sure to touch back on killing dogs at the end of the show. Um, yeah, I just was like, <sighs> when I saw that, I was like, I don't know anything about the UK. I don't know about their laws. I thought that they had the same freedoms we have, but apparently not. I, was I guess like, you can joke about the Nazis. I, I remember I went on a cruise way back in the day, like literally like 15 years ago. And I was hanging out with some kids um, from America. And there was a couple of UK girls there. And one of them at one point was just like, oh, like it's something came up. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm Jewish. And he was like, you're Jewish? Mm. You're Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> He's Jewish. You're Jewish. <laughs> like, yeah, and like, oh, wow. I never met a Jew before. And he went on to talk about Jews and a lot of the stuff he said was very racist, mm -hmm. really fucked up. And the UK girl was like, if you said that stuff in the UK, you can literally go to jail. Huh. And I, in my head, I was like, oh, she's goofing around. <laughs> she wasn't goofing around. Yeah. So I don't think this is a new thing. <laughs> right. I think just that's how serious it is. I know in Germany, and that makes more sense to me that like if you talk about Hitler or Nazi propaganda, you, you'll go to prison. That makes sense to me in Germany. They don't want. They don't want to do that whole thing again. Yeah, that didn't work out. Yeah. Although in a weird way it did, because Germany's prospered. They took yeah. like a weird route there, but they seem to be doing well now. Hey, not that bad. Start a couple <laughs> world wars. Like, yeah, we made a couple mistakes, but like it worked out. It's almost like you said, a couple false starts, <laughs> and you find your footing in the end. <laughs> Who am I to criticize their plan? <laughs> Now, would you go to jail for that joke right now? Possibly. If you in were Germany, in the UK? possibly. In the UK, I, I don't know, maybe. I'll never but, go in there but again. The, but there's the possibility that you could. Yeah. <coughs> that's I try scary. way too hard to be a funny person to ever go to the UK that's right. comfortably again. That, because that, that's the American spirit. It's like, if I want to say I'm going to F a bunch of freaking flips, gas a bunch of Jews. That, it is a word. That is a word. Gas. No, if you said a word. F? The yeah. F word. That is a word. That's a derogatory word. Right. I swear. What's your point? What are you saying? Oh, no, because <laughs> I thought you were trying to say it to, like, bypass a word, but then you ended up saying one. Oh, oh it counts. <laughs> oh, here's my ultimate point. Yeah. Okay? There were UFOs on the news, like, three months ago. You guys see those videos? No. Full-on UFOs, like, F-16 fighter pilot jets being like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. It's a UFO. Look at that. And it's spinning, and it's doing weird shit, and it's I all that. that. I swear to God, I believe aliens can invade Earth. They will be at our doorsteps. Like, it'll be like Independence Day, motherships Are you all waiting over. for that? Are you expecting that? It'd be pretty cool. <laughs> I hope I'm alive for it. But I'm just saying it could be there. That's where we could be at. Uh -huh. And no one will talk about it. They'll be like, oh, my God, this guy this guy said something homophobic on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Let's go get him, boys. The, Let's get him. <laughs> that's priority. The mothership is the currently can, over New York. Yeah, they could but be here. But hear what Dankula <laughs> said about the Jews? Yeah, exactly. They'll be like, that is borderline anti-Semitic, and I think we should talk to him right now. <laughs> yeah. Those aliens, they could fucking wait. Yeah. <laughs> And I just feel like that's where we are on, uh, it's on pretty bad. planet Earth now. Did you follow yeah. the whole uh, me being accused of trans being transphobic? That's what right? I was referencing earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, uh, that was very reaching. <laughs> so I'm like, I saw that. I'm like, how far are we reaching now? Yeah. And I actually, I saw that girl's post. I was like, oh, she's just been waiting to, to use that meme format. 
Mm. You know that format where yeah. you say that. Well, Eva, I think she just been waiting to thought. do that and to just. She's like, oh, here's where I could jump in on it. So and she used it, and then it's like, oh, she, yeah. Well, yeah. at first we thought. It I was, thought at first it was some sort of a joke that I was missing, like a meme. I don't know, but then I realized it was serious. I, no, it, I it, didn't see anything like. I don't know. No, it's insane. I, we did a video. We put up a video, and there was some weird jokes in the video. And I was like, oh, let's take that out. Let's take that out. I edited this video, like, so that it had some weird stuff pulled out. And then I put it up, and this girl on Twitter was like, you know, I watch all your stuff, and this one really got to me. And I was like, oh, why? I will take criticism sometimes, you know? I was like, why is that? She was like, I just felt like it was really offensive to vegans and really super rude to vegans. And now I know that we made some jokes towards vegans, but we definitely didn't go anywhere like they should fucking die or anything like that. It was just whole total, 10 on 10 hilarious jokes. <laughs> and that was it. And I was like, oh, I'm like, did I offend you? She's like, no, I'm not vegan. I just felt that it was very offensive. And I was like, okay, which part? And she was like, I'll have to watch it again. And I was like, this is the problem here <laughs> because you're not vegan but you feel like it's offensive and you're going to go back to try and find out why you maybe felt it's just that everyone's got their 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 sensors up on so sensitive that like I I sometimes see things I'll watch something and I'll see it and I'm like oh I bet people will get offended about that mm -hmm. every day things happen I look at that I'm like oh people will get offended about that right you know I kind of like what you said I was watching your Twitter video about the doctor disrespect his Asian guy character yeah and I like what you said in a way where he was denying that it was racist. And you're like, I like it, it's funny, and it's racist. And it's racist, yeah. But it's like, okay, I kind of like that acknowledgement of being like, well, first of all, I'm not acknowledging that what I said is transphobic. I don't want people to make No, they're that. very different, very but, different but scenarios. Like, but to be like, okay, I chose to make a racist joke for the sake of comedy. But I think the most important thing that nobody fucking considers of everyone who loves to get angry all the time is that what really matters is the intention. Yeah. You're not someone who wishes harm or has bad intentions if you make a racist joke that is harmless. Because there's a, you know. Well, that's it. Like, I, I'm like, dude, I like, I, I, I love one of my favorite comics, uh, Anthony Jeselnik says the most terrible things ever. Mm -hmm. the most terrible things ever. If he ever were to be like, it's not that bad. It'd be kind of fucked up that he says that mm. stuff. It's the fact that he's like, oh, I no. know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People know that I say fucked up yeah. things. And I'm a huge fan of Dr. Disrespect. And like, you know, when he yeah. does like the, like basically mimicking a Chinese person's speaking mock Chinese, even though I think he's hilarious at it. And what do I know? I'm a white Jew. How could I ever know if that is offensive? But if someone gets offended. I love offended, that we have to give that disclaimer. I don't know anything. I'm a white Jew. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> I, I had that problem too when I was making that video about like my response to the trans shit. I was like, I I was thinking about saying something like that, but it's like, I'm just a white Jew. Yeah, well, I don't know anything. You want to preemptively, you want to preemptively like know, just stop I, those comments from coming. I know, up. but, but it's what, like, what I what I settled on is this: yeah. if if you went and you stubbed your toe, and you were like, ah, fuck, it kills it. And I was like, let me see, and I looked at it. I'm like, oh, it's fine. You're not hurt. <laughs> it does hurt you. Yeah. I got to trust that it hurts you. That's all. So if someone, yeah. if someone Asian is like, that's fucked up. Yeah. Then I'll be like, you know Their what? pain is I, real. Maybe, maybe it is. I, I, I'll just, I'll believe you, you know, cause someone can go and like, uh, shake a jar of pennies in my face and I'll be like, that's fucked up. And they'll be like, no, it's not. And I'll be like, well, you know, not, it, it, it was kind of, it was that. a hack joke, but now that you're saying it's not fucked up, I want to fight you, you know, cause it is fucked up. But, like, you just need to just know that it's fucked up. And doing, like, the mock Asian thing is racist. You yeah. can't you can't yell ching chong at a Chinese man and then say that it's not racist because, you know, I think he was like, yo, my girlfriend's dad's yeah. Hawaiian, bro. It's cool <laughs> yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Which is like, that doesn't cut it, you know? But I was having a good time laughing at some funny content that I thought was funny, but I'm a terrible person, so I can laugh at racist things. I don't think you have to be a terrible to person. Except we need a, a, yeah, you know, a terrible person. Insinuate that I'm terrible uh, on that the most sensitive person will find a million reasons to get <laughs> but, annoyed with me. And that's the problem. But I'm, I'm, I think, I think joking about sexuality and races and yeah. all that is important. And yeah, I think is. joking about the Holocaust is super important also. Yeah. I think it's important. If mm -hmm. We're like, joking is an art. We'll remember things by how we laughed at it or whatever. And if you, like in that scenario, I wish that he would have been like, Either A, like, huh, my name's Dr. Disrespect. What the fuck did you think? Right. Other than I would disrespect the bitch. I'll disrespect the whole race and, you know, whatever. 
But then it got to like a weird quasi place. I didn't, where by I the way, like, I didn't oh. follow the whole, I didn't see his response. I just saw, I like how you explained. That. Yeah. Well, because I felt like it could be taken, what I was said could be taken and applied to lots of things. Right. Where it's just like recognizing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like, uh, like the PewDiePie is like, I, I know it. Like the guy invited me to sleep on the, the couch at his house if I ever wanted to go and film with him, you know. I don't think he hates Jewish people. He knows very well I'm Jewish. You know, I, I don't think that's, I never thought that. But the content, yeah, the content, the joke was anti-Semitic in definition, but he is nowhere near an anti-Semite. You know yeah. what I mean? Like in my experience no, with him. No, he's not. You know what sure, I mean? So like, yeah. it's it's like people take the joke and, and it's just comedy is at, Comedy is at risk. Mm, you know, that's right. I, I'm always pro comedy. That's right. I'm always like, what I hated the most was growing up is if, uh, like, you know, like someone would make like a, a racist or homophobic remark and I might say something, but I might make like an anti Semitic one and then a Jewish person would get offended and I'd be like, no, you're ruining the game because the game is all or nothing. And if you're going to get mad at one of them, then you're going to ruin the whole concept of the game. And the like for me, like I like pushing buttons. I like being extreme. So I'll always default to saying something about Jewish people because I can go to that far edge mm-hmm. and then be like, oh, it's our word, the mm-hmm. K word. You know, I could mm-hmm. say that. It's fine. You know, and if someone else said, it, I'd be like, oh, as long as it's funny, let him do it. If it's not mm-hmm. funny, let's make fun of them for not being funny. But also just know when you're being racist or know when you're saying something homophobic or whatever. And I thought your tweet was, uh, however that even came as being transphobic, does not make sense was, to me at all. That was the part that really frustrated me was that, like, I didn't even know why I was being It was such a reach. It was just such an intense reach that I, I thought like it was it, so goofy. What am I missing? I feel like I it's just it. that people are expecting at this point that you shouldn't you should never be offended by anything. Like, it's fine to be offended. You can move on. Right. It's a normal, yeah. healthy reaction like, that we living in society want, are supposed to feel. You, you need could be to a be able, You need to be able to talk and express yourself. If right. you're going to worry about every little thing you may offend, you can't say anything anymore. Or if you get offended so, and you want that person to pay, is like, that's I need where justice. it's... Mm-hmm. Justice yeah. on yeah, on the the offensive aspects is weird. You By know? the way, yeah. I can only imagine how many people were reporting our channel and trying to get my Twitter banned and shit. Yeah, because that's it. It's like a it's uh, it's all about retribution. The thing that really annoys me is like <laughs> I'm I'm so pro trans right and so liberal on social issues, and I feel like I'm an ally to them. Mm-hmm. I'm not a conservative Christian who thinks that they're, they're mentally ill or that they're a desecration of God or anything like the shit that I hear that's really awful. I understand that growing up trans is probably real. It has to be extremely difficult. Mm-hmm. A lot of them are, are at risk for suicide and depression and shit like that. And that you should call people by the pronoun that they want and the name that they want. And I totally understand. I respect that. I feel like I'm a sensitive dude to their issues. And it's just, so it's like, why are you... Mm-hmm. Trying to ruin that alliance. Like, I'm on your side, dude. Why are you segregating us? People jump, people jump the gun on pointing fingers. And what's weird about it is like, you know, what I don't like is like now if someone this week were to Google your name, it's just (coughs) attached to something that says like transphobic Mm -hmm. and that just exists and it's there. And then, you know, obviously like some websites will mention it or talk about it. Ethan and then Clyde, it becomes who was a recently thing. accused of being mm-hmm. transphobic. Yeah. Which is, yeah, that's 100% true. Yeah. You were recently accused of that. And whether it's, like, it's, whether it's, it's true completely or not. baseless and yeah. completely nonsense. Let's not know? get into that, though. Yeah, even like, you know, I was listening to the podcast with Shane, like how terrible that is. The whole, you know, Shane Dawson is. Mm-hmm. Dude, that, that was that's, insane. That's fucking like, that's 12 on 10 scary shit. That, I, that, that Twitter news that I, they featured that. Exactly. And how shocking. fast that gets out of control. Like, this is minor compared to that. Yeah. That's, oh, big time. Uh, yeah. That's, no, no. But that's insane. Like, and I, and like, you know, that's what's scary is like this day and age, like, you know, uh, something can happen. Someone, someone could be accused of one thing or whatever. And then before you know it, you're in this box or this bin where mm-hmm. the company of that bin is. 10 times worse than what you're even falsely mm-hmm. being accused of. Right. And that's what's weird is you get yeah. thrown into these bins. We categorize kind of people. Like, yeah. First, I think that Twitter should be deeply ashamed of that whole Shane Dawson thing. That was just shocking. I, agree. I think that's borderline like... It's America. You should sue them. <laughs> I genuinely think that what they did was borderline... I can't remember the fucking word. What is it? Defamation. Yeah. What they did. I know they have some exemptions if they're like journal, journal, but you have to have, there's some journalistic standards. 
Yeah, like you should use that power to correct yourself the next day. They never on did, the front it, and page. they kept it up for a long time. Too. So fucked up. Yeah, just fucked up. But that was one thing. Oh. There's, it's like one of those under underside risks of doing what we do. Is you know you put your name out there, and like you said, you 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 go on the mic and you talk on the mic nonstop. You're gonna say some dumb shit or whatever, yeah. or maybe you don't. But people will piece together some dumb shit or say you something. You can easily dumb. remove context <clears throat> from anything. There's this picture. Like this picture that, like, I could see why someone would think it was me. Like, it almost <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it sounds so bad. Uh, but I, I could show you the picture if, if, I, if I find it on my phone. But it was just this picture, and it looks like a guy that, like, could almost be me, but he had, like, a tattoo that I don't have a single tattoo. What did you do, dude? It was just, it was him, and then it was this girl that looks like it could be another, another YouTuber. Mm-hmm. Like, really, if you wanted it to be. And their faces were blurred. Hmm. But, like, they were, like, naked together, and, like, it looks like it could be me and another YouTuber. And I just remember, it, like, the week that it went on Twitter, like, in 2014, people were tweeting it like crazy. And, like, my girlfriend at the time was just like, look, is this you? And I was like, yo, I'm like, look at my shoulder. I'm sh-. And this is, like, my girlfriend. We're in the same apartment. I'm like, look at my shoulder. I have no hair. This guy's got hair all over. And she's like... You're lucky. And I'm like, I am lucky. And it's like, this is you. But the people that are looking at this picture, they don't have me showing them my shoulder. They don't know me as well. They're just like, damn, damn, dog, look at you two. You did this. And Mm -hmm. it's like not a thing that happened, you know? That's crazy. But yeah, it's just wild. It's just what it is. And it's funny because like I'm sitting here like sharing this with you guys right now. And like there's still an element of me that's just even randomly sharing. There wasn't even anything bad to it. There's nothing bad to it. It's like, okay, yeah, we fucked each other even. Let's just say that is what happened when it's not. But, like, I'm still sharing, and it is somewhat an innocent enough thing. And I'm casually sharing it, and, like, I know it's not. But there's still an element of, like, you know, you get this aspect of, like, I don't know if I should believe this motherfucker. <laughs> hey, you know, he, would, you, he would do <laughs> that. <laughs> he would do that. He would. He would fuck this guy. Hey, this Who guy was would it? Fuck. Who was it that they thought that you that you fucked? I didn't want to. I don't want to say because I feel like it's, like, a thing. And then it's, like, kind of, okay. like, a thing, you know. <laughs> but it's definitely not someone that would ever fuck me. Someone that I know well enough, and I would tell you that they would never They would never. That's fuck exactly me. what you would so say. If no, they I'm go, kidding. If they go back deep enough. Every time I meet you, you have the best. You've got all the Jews, all the stories. You were there from day one. I know a lot of it you would never say on camera. Because every time I see this guy, he's telling me shit that's blowing my mind. I was just like, what the hell? Like, how do you know that? Like, are you serious? Best shit. Is there any stories that you can tell on camera that is just like the greatest, craziest YouTube shit? What's a good one that I could tell on camera? <laughs> the best shit, you guys. I'm telling you. Get this guy off camera, he'll blow your mind. It's too bad. Like, it's too, it's too bad. Like, 90% of them are, like, incriminating to yeah. some, Very, some of your Everything favorite you told YouTubers. me was extremely incriminating to all of our favorite YouTubers. Yeah. <laughs> there was, I remember there was a point, like, uh, where, like, it was like, you know Toby Turner? Of course. Toby Turner was, like... The Great Gatsby of YouTube at one point, where he yep. had parties every single weekend at his house, and they were like <laughs> extravagant parties, mm-hmm. like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and uh, I just remember going to those parties and being like, <laughs> something bad is going to happen here. Mm. Something bad will happen. There's just too many YouTubers, too many people getting fucked up. I just mm. feel like something bad will happen, and I just remember I used to go there like all the time and like you know i had some some buddies some guys that were on epic meal time then and they were just like oh man maybe we should stop coming to these like it's getting fucked up <laughs> and then i remember the last time i went it was like the last straw of me we're like okay let's go was <laughs> we went in the backyard and like in the hot tub was like someone that i recognized from like fine brothers like teens react <laughs> and this is like a party there's like drugs going around and drinking sure. going around we walk yeah. in and I look in the back I'm like yo I'm like uh, that's one of the kids from Teens React <laughs> like we leave now let's go that was the last time I was there but anyone who's ever been at a Toby Turner party who's ever gone to any of those they've been fucked up they know exactly <laughs> they got yeah. fucked up everyone's been fucked up at those parties everyone like every YouTuber if they've ever been like oh I remember the, I was at a Toby Turner party and this they were on prob- they were on ecstasy what probably yeah <laughs> Everyone. Those were the days, huh? Crazy. Those were the YouTube days, right? You know what's what's funny is like it, w- my experience on YouTube going through so many phases that I have been. I, I can recognize enough that sometimes someone will say to me, like, you know, if I talk to one of the guys that used to be on Epic Meal Time, they're like, man, then whatever, man, those were the days. And then a part of me thinks, I'm like, these are the days. Hmm. And I know that's like a weird thing to say, 
But, like, we are still in the days. Mm. And I know that, like, there were times where I'm like, oh, those were the days. But, like, these are the days, too, in a weird way. Like, I had, like, the days where I remember that when, like, Epic Meal Time was, like, fastest growing number one channel on YouTube. It was, like, you know, like, 10 million views a week. And we were, like, going, like, up, like, 25,000 subscribers every week. And, and back it's, like, then, that was a lot more than those it is were the, today. Yeah, yeah, those were the those days. Those were ungodly numbers. Yeah, that was, it yeah. was messed up. Those were the days. And it was, like, Food Network was, like, had a show where they had a guy that looked exactly like me. Really? But he was just, like, doing, like, <laughs> we're doing outrageous <laughs> Foods. <laughs> it was That's like outrageous point. meal time or something. <laughs> right. And like, you know, huge corporations are, are trademarking our brand. And like to an extent, those were the days. But then after that, you know, we moved to LA and living in LA, like those were the days. Mm. And then we got to work with like some people like Arnold Schwarzenegger or Seth Rogen, James Franco. And I'm like, those were the days. <laughs> But, like, then there's an aspect of it where I, I, I sit about, like, I think about the times where we've met, where I met you guys at the YouTube thing <laughs> or something like coming here. And I'm like, these are the days, We're too. Like, pizza days. in a bag for me <laughs> is, like, these yeah. are the days. There mm -hmm. are, like, the days are, like, there, there's just so many, you know? There's just, like, it, it's all the days. Like, it'll all be one when you look back in 20 years from right. now. It'll all be the days, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, the the... The Joey salads and like you know the lawsuit and the right, podcast right. everything will be like into the days. Yeah, those yeah. are the days. That's all. I think mixed. that's healthy. I think that's a that's a good outlook for anyone who's listening because I think people have a tendency to be like always looking back. Yeah, romanticize the the, the past. truth is about the days too. I mean, you'll talk about this all the time. Like we idealized the time we were in Santa Cruz and we're like, man, those were the days back then. Like we were broke. We're and now we even by. sometimes talk like that about the times in Israel. <laughs> right. Or the times in New York. But you, you romanticize you, it and you're like, those were the days. But when you actually like meditate and think back, you were miserable back then. <laughs> there dude. were a lot of complaining. It was fucked up. <laughs> People are like, man, YouTube's so fucked up these days. And I was like, dude, YouTube's always been fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> you think it's fucked up now? People used to complain and be like, why is there 15 Taylor Swift parody music videos on the front page every day? <laughs> Why doesn't my content <laughs> pop? And like, right, th there right. was always something like that. There was always <laughs> an element, like, you know, people are like, oh, I heard this YouTuber's like not even that nice to everyone. It's mm -hmm. like people said that about like Ray William Johnson back in the day. I There's, think he hates me. Who? <laughs> Ray William. Yeah, I bet. Well, <laughs> I don't I'm know not. why. I've never caught, though I, all, I don't, I'm, I'm, he's before my time on YouTube. Yeah. I didn't really watch his content. I know who he is. I know about his lawsuit case because he was our predecessor. He lost his case. I st we studied it a little bit mm -hmm. in preparation for our case and why he lost and what, you know, why that happened. But uh, he's a real interesting guy. I appreciate what he's accomplished. And I was like, hey, you should come on the podcast, you know. I'd love to it'd be a really interesting conversation because we have a lot in commonality. The guy does, he watches videos. That's kind of what we do. We've both been in a lawsuit about fair use. So somebody, I tweeted at him, he didn't respond, but it got a lot of attention. Somebody showed me a screenshot. They've been following each other for a long time. For some reason, they know each other, I guess. And he's like, hey, you should go on the H3 podcast. I heard that he wanted to have you on there. And he blocked him. <laughs> Straight up blocked him, dude. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, he, like, what's that about? So, I listen, I met I was kind of like I yeah. met him. I met him a few times in yeah. person. And uh he hangs out with Jeff Dunham, by the way. It's interesting. You know what? Cuz like, you know what? Like, I I come from a place where it's like this. If if you if you make content, you put yourself out there, then you are open game for discussion. We can talk about you. Mm -hmm. We can. That's just how it is. Um I think there's 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 a fine line to that. Like, I, I'm for, you know, uh, the content you guys make. I'm about that. I find it weird, like, sometimes when a creator will, like, you know, talk about, like, an 11-year-old girl's Instagram feed, you know? I like, agree. Like, rice gum content is yeah, weird to me. I, I agree with and that. And there's a sure. difference. But when someone like Ray, he's like, uh, you know, he's a real person. I've met him before. He's been nice to me. I do know that he doesn't like being the topic of conversation. Huh. Um, so I know even in this scenario, I, I, from what I remembered of him, I haven't hung out with him in years is he wouldn't like that I'm even discussing right now uh, huh. about him, but there's an element of when you become the top, there's an element we might never really grasp unless you've been there yourself. Hmm. Like I remember when, uh, Jenna Marbles was blowing up mm -hmm. and that skyrocketing, like how that affected her in my encounters with her personally. Hmm. Uh, I saw Logan Paul when he was on Vine, and then I saw him 
when he was on YouTube before he popped. And then I saw him when he was skyrocketing mm -hmm. and there was something similar there. There's a similar, mm. what is it? De what happened? It's this detachment to an extent of like relationships and whatever. And there's this element of any, any person that you can think of or speak to or people that would message you, there's an element in this position where it's like, what do they want from mm -hmm. me? Sure. What does that person I mean, want I have, from me? I definitely have an element That's of true. that. So if I you're like number people. one yeah, and you've yeah. been number one, then you have that feeling with everybody. Yeah, sure. So, you know, like Logan had it, or I've noticed, I thought maybe Jenna may have had it, but, but Ray had a, a strong aspect of that, that, yeah. you know, I'm sure he was one of the people that were there way beginning, way early on. Right. And maybe there was that element of like, what does this person want from me? From uh, me? Just him and to be on the podcast. Yeah, but you, but like, God damn it, but why you trying to you trying to put me on blast about right, right, who knows? Right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, my yeah. my encounter yeah. is this, and yeah. this is an important one to this scenario, is um, I went out and I and I I tend to be someone who connects with everyone. I literally That's like true. I met like one person on YouTube that I didn't like. Literally, everyone else like I liked, and I went out once, and it was a scenario where I I went to this club, and Ray was going to be there. And uh, Sam Pepper gave me a lift. So it was just like an interesting night. Did he this touch was your like, ass? No, this was pre-ass touching. <laughs> and so I, I got there with Sam. And that was a ball from Grace. Ray was so, there. Yeah. So. And he, uh, this was the perfect encounter. That sums him up in a way. Sam went up to him and was like, oh my God, I'm a huge fan. I made YouTube because of you. I can't believe it. Like, it's just, you made me want to be a YouTuber. Hmm. And Ray said to him, I'm not a YouTuber. And then Sam said, Ray William Johnson. And he was like, yep. And he was like, yeah, you're a YouTuber. I used to watch Equals 3. I loved it. He's like, you made me want to do this. And like, you know, and I, I, I literally, like, I loved your channel. He goes, cool, but I'm not a YouTuber. And he goes, well, you were a YouTuber. And he mm -hmm. was like, I was never a YouTuber. And he was like mad. And he kind of stepped away. And Sam was like, to me, like, I'm getting mad. Like, I'm getting mad at him. Why is he saying he's not a YouTuber? Right. And I was like, well, let's be, uh, let's be honest. It's pretty lame. <laughs> we, but we all are. He totally is. Yeah. Yeah, we're all YouTubers, <laughs> you know? But, like, saying you're a YouTuber maybe is an element that you don't want. Like, I knew that he, you know, he's, he's a musician. He's a writer. He had directed content that did not go on YouTube. So if you just say you're a YouTuber, maybe he felt like that was limiting what he's done or whatever. But he, that encounter himself is, I don't know anyone else that would have had 9 million subscribers where 8.99999 of them would refer to them, him as a YouTuber and one of them would refer to him as their son, you know, and everyone else would be like a YouTuber. So Well, also that, when a, when a young, impressionable fan comes up to you and is just being nice and looking for a little... Yeah, well, who's also exchange. now in his own right, he was successful at that at time. At that time, YouTube. he was probably, I remember yeah, he was, Sam was a big deal. Yeah, so it was like that in itself. It was just weird and I'm in the middle... And that just right there, I mean, I guess to an extent can give you a, a hint at, you know, huh. What's going the, the, on there? the mind frame, you know? So it might not be that he hates you, but it is interesting that he went and blocked that person. Just, <laughs> just <laughs> straight up blocked for asking. <laughs> but I was like, shit, bro. But that, that comes from a really sour talks place. That's not a help, happy man who's blocking people just well, for asking. Well, you know, I, I found it right? interesting. Yeah, like, so. you know, like Maker Studios had like a weird dynamic back in the day. Like I used to go there and it was very strange because it's like you have all these employees that want to be YouTubers and want to create channels. Mm. But they're now, until they get their break, they're working for other channels. Mm. And that person's coming in and is like, edit it better, bro. Interesting. You know, and right. it's like you are, you're working for this guy's channel, but you want to be spending time on your own channel. Yeah. But you're trying to work your way. You're trying to make something happen. You're trying to figure it out. So I think Maker just had a very strange dynamic, but I remember people used to bash Ray. Like, I'd go to VidCon and be like, VidCon, Ray's not even at VidCon, thinks he's too good for VidCon. Mm. Huh. And my only thought process is maybe he's just really uncomfortable or unhappy or, you know, like, I don't know. When, when I started doing YouTube, when I went to the first VidCon, I was shocked at how strange every creator was. Mm. I'll go with my black, like, yo, you, oh my God, I love your shit. And they'd be like, ah. <laughs> Interesting. And I was like, oh, it must have taken a sp particular type of person to be like, I'm going to go on this site, YouTube, which doesn't even make money yet. Yeah. And I'm just going to for fun talk to no one mm -hmm. and say, like me, follow me, subscribe to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to upload it every day. And I'm not even like getting paid for it or anything. I'm just doing it because this. This is who I am. And I just noticed that I'm like, well, those people 
are different people from myself. Mm. Now it's different. Now it's like being a YouTuber is cool in mm -hmm. this day and age, you know, like someone like when, like I was telling Tim DeLegato, I was like, bro, when you uploaded your first video to YouTube, Jake Paul was six. Yeah. Like he was mm. six years old. Right. So he grew up at a time where it's like, yo, what YouTube? It's actually cool to be a YouTuber, bro. Right. Like Ray grew up at a time where it was not cool. In mm. fact, it was uncool. In fact, you were just using it as a, as a milestone, stepping stone mm. to get to other stuff, to right. be yeah. respected in auditions. Right. You know, I used to talk to him and he said he used to wash his dishes in his videos to seem relatable with the audience. He never wanted to say that he had an Escalade at the time. He didn't want to talk about his fancy car or his fancy lifestyle because he thought that would be weird for the audience. Where I remember when we came onto the scene, we were like, oh, let's pretend like we're rappers. We'll, we're pre going to pretend we have money before we had money. Like we said YouTube money before we ever got our first paycheck. <laughs> right, we were right, just right. like, let's just be like, we got a million dollars doing <laughs> cooking, uh, you know? Right, right. But it was just to counter culture what was happening then. But he came at a time where it was like uncool to be a YouTuber. <laughs> You know, so maybe he is just not a happy guy. I really, I don't well, talk I don't, to him I anymore. Don't, I don't anything about the guy. He's an interesting dude, and I'd love to sit down and uh, talk with I him. I think it would be, and I'm sure someone's going to be like, Ray, they spoke about you at this moment, and <laughs> check this out. Ray, you should He's definitely gonna go on this podcast. Ray, here, if you block me if you don't want to come on, <laughs> and if you do want to come on, follow me. Those are your two <laughs> options. Yeah. You can't do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is friends with Jeff Dunham. I've noticed that he's friends with Jeff Dunham. Who is my person? They're friends. They just made they a make video together. together. They're friends. They're like it's cut from the same block of wood. It's like work. You they're, know cut, what? they're cut from the same block of. Uh, of I don't think he would work with someone that he doesn't like personally. Mm. I like. I think if he's working with someone, he likes them personally. I think if he's working with someone, he's bringing them into like his you circle. You know what? I, I think, think it is what you just said. Connected with me. I think he's like doesn't he even want to associate with this shit that's going on here. Yes. Because he's a big fucking deal. He makes collabs with Jeff Dunham. I think My, he wants the best, to move past The this. most powerful comedian that's ever lived who puts puppets on his hand and tells racist jokes through the puppet so that he's not accountable. <laughs> he's friends with the great and wonderful Jeff Dunham, and he'll be goddamn if he come waste his time with me. He prefers to spend his time with Peanut. He prefers to spend his time with the talking jalapeno pepper that sounds like over-the-top Mexican. <laughs> So I'm way, I'm way, way, way below his level. Let me ask uh, you this. Yeah. We, oh, we didn't do the giant vape. <laughs> Bring up the giant vape for Christ's sake. <laughs> <laughs> it's so important. We totally forgot. Yeah. All right. You got to hit this thing. Like uh, um, it's customary that so this is like ceremonial. Yeah. We usually do it in the beginning, but we forgot. So hit this, hit this monster, would you? Now it's not a competition between the guests at all. It's been sanitized. So don't worry about that. It's been spit shined by Dan. <laughs> is there a chronic in this? There's no chronic. It's just vape juice. Now, is Sherry okay? He's like dying. Aww. I think he's just, yeah, he's all right. Um, now, it's not a competition, but there there is a friendly exchange between people to see who can rip the fattest vape cloud. <laughs> so don't worry about it, you know. But like, let me warn you. Let me give you some advice. If you rip it too hard, you cough. And when you cough, the smoke disappears. So you have to find a balance of <laughs> ripping it really hard and not too hard. Well, shit, I, wish I, I wish I had been working on my vaping. So the button's right there and you just suck. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to love it. <laughs> yeah, eh? Is, do people ever this? Yeah. That? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's where you suck from. Yeah, I hold this? Yeah. You, I hold it. I would hold it. <laughs> Every time. Hey, this is, this is here in person. Yeah. <laughs> I know this. <laughs> All right. Godspeed. You ready? Um, can't wait. <laughs> Do you go all around this, or you go like like a bottle? Like ooh. I would go all around it. Yeah. Yeah, for max suction. You're very, yeah. you're very, that's you're very self-aware about holding that little phallic <laughs> tube, <laughs> wrapping your mouth around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> max suction. <laughs> Don't worry, man. Just put your mouth around that little tube and suck it. <laughs> ready? Hit it. <laughs> He's ready. Let's get the donation. Hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It's a fat rip. He's very tender, very dainty. Oh, oh! oh that was good. Oh no! It's so good. Oh, no. That was good. It's so good. Can I hit it again? You can take another hit at it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, by all means. You that was impressive because you coughed, but you also still got a pretty fat rip. That was a fat rip. <laughs> It was, no, it wasn't that big, but you cough. If you didn't cough, it was going to be a lot, really big. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that 
That's a uh, fat cloud. Uh, there you go, buddy. Fat cloud of the game. Hey. Nice. All right. Good. What the, flavor is that? Coconut? Coconut it's a uh, donut. Okay. <laughs> donut. I don't know anything. <laughs> so, uh, thank you for doing that, by the way. How was that? Good? Yeah, that was Did great. it hurt the first rip? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> oh, no. It's sometimes, it coughed. Sometimes, I coughed it out, and it's like it went, yeah. Sometimes when it's not been serviced, I don't know why. You just told me it was cleaned and everything. No, no, no. The, the <laughs> tube is clean. The tube is clean. Not been used. But sometimes, I don't know why it rips so harsh. It's like battery acid. It, like, so, you know, it's so funny. Vapes carry the worst. Like, like if you have a vape... You suck online automatically. Did you know this? <laughs> Let me explain. Let me explain. I have an account on Instagram. Mm -hmm. It's literally a toy account. It's my side passion fun project. Mm -hmm. I have little dolls. I swear, 12 inch <laughs> dolls of like Star Wars figures what is that and stuff. Instagram? It's called Young Toy Boy. <laughs> what? Y U N G Toy Boy. Yeah. So I, I put this up, and sometimes I'll tell people how I made a picture. Like, I'll be like, oh, here's what I did. Like, and I'll be like, the background is cardboard. It's really I'm really well shot. I'm using the Hot Toys uh, uh, Ray picture or a, a sideshow of Boba Fett and the Alien Queen. The and then I'll say like, and then I, uh, I, I use like a blue light. And I'll say, I took my vape, which I literally bought the vape for this. Right. And I bought the vape to, atmosphere. to blow it yeah. into the picture so there's smoke in the picture. This is why I bought the vape. And I'll tell people, I'll put the picture up, and I'll be like, yeah, check it out. It's the Sideshow Boba Fett. I put some cardboard in the back there, and I blew my vape for the smoke effect. Right here. <laughs> and then all the comments are like, you have a vape? Oh, my <laughs> God, you fucking loser. Kill yourself. You're so shit. You're so garbage. Wow, vape more, douchebag. Jesus. And I'm like, yo, I literally just, I literally just took a picture of dolls. There's a lot They're, of people these are trying like, to kill you. These are pictures of <laughs> dolls. I took a picture of dolls, and I set them up with fake plants and everything like that, and I took the picture, and you're going to come at me for the vape. <laughs> right. There's but like, way more problematic like, than yeah, exactly. a grown like, man. It, exactly. Yeah. I'm like a grown man lying on my tummy on the streets <laughs> taking a picture of toys. Yeah, this is pretty And well then shot, people will be though. like, oh, man, you use your vape? Wow. <laughs> Fucking, you suck, bro. You suck. And I'm like, but how did that outshine... The fact the that fact you play, that a grown man playing with yeah yeah playing with dolls these yeah. are really crazy yeah these are really cool actually Dan, yeah do you ever feel discriminated against because our producer Dan is a is a big actual vapor Dan do you ever feel discriminated against for vaping no no I mean I, does that yeah. ever spit I in your face I see the the hate online but um. Not you know, in real life. Not in real life. Oh my I God. mean, they're probably talking shit behind my back, but a hundred percent they are. I Damn, you, when you leave, everyone's like that vaping. Son Thank of a God, bitch. He's like, this guy vapes. <laughs> wow. By wow. the way, I didn't want to stay in front of him, but Dan is a pussy. He vapes. I don't know. <laughs> so we always ask our guests at the bottom of the show if you have any, and it's okay if you don't have them. Okay, paranormal, extraterrestrial, or unexplainable. Stories that have ever happened to you ghost stories. Yes, as, I do. Uh, you do. Okay. Do. God bless you. What do you got for me? So I uh, I was dating this girl not my ex mm -hmm. or my ex, but the other ex Before epic meal time ever happened <laughs> in my basement <clears throat> And I always felt like weird vibes in my basement like uh, I'd wake up sometimes and I, I felt like I couldn't breathe, mm. you know, and I'm not someone who's like, there's ghosts, but I am someone like, maybe there's ghosts, you know, uh, I'm like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very like, anything is possible to exist or not exist. Who knows? Go to certain trouble. Can someone grab him? Let him out of the room? And so what happened was I, uh, there's this ghost in, in, in history or in different cultures that sits on your chest. I've heard. Yeah. And you could wake up maybe like, or in your dream, you can't breathe mm -hmm. or you're kind of awake and you know, you're napping, but you can't breathe. Mm. And it's like, it's like hard to breathe. Mm. And it's like, there's this just, I, I experienced it. I remember experiencing it and Googling it and then finding that in, in culture, there's just like this ghost that sits on your chest, mm. whatever, you know, it's a thing, whatever. I had these weird experiences. And then I remember, um, being in bed with my girlfriend at the time. And it felt like we're both in bed and I wake up, it's like 4 a.m. and it's, it's black in the room, it's all the lights are off. And I felt like someone was at the edge of the bed kind of like pushing down on the bed. Hmm. 
and it felt like the bed was moving a bit Jesus. and I felt that and my face was up against the wall so I like put my finger on the wall to see if my finger was moving or if I was just imagining this bounce mm. and I felt my finger like going mm. on the wall so I was like oh, it feels like someone's here mm. and so I roll over this way so I'm facing her now but you know I don't know if she's facing me or if she's sleeping whatever and I roll over and she just goes oh, Harley Harley and I was like what and she goes there's someone here and I look at the foot of the bed and it's, everything's black, but at the foot of the bed, it's extra black, hmm. like really dark, like ultimate darkness. So there's just like two things you could do here. I could scream at the top of my lungs, uh, or I could fight. I kind of did a mix of both. I like stood up and I was like, ah! and like fell through whatever was there or wasn't there. And my light is behind it. So when I fell through it, I hit my light. And my light turns on and she's got tears all over her face. She was like, there was a ghost here for like 20 minutes. I swear he was there. Don't freak out. And I, I totally thought there was a ghost. I was like, oh, don't worry. I wasn't going to be like, oh my God, I felt it too. So I was like, oh, don't worry, you stupid idiot. You thought there was a ghost here? No, nah, that's so dumb. You must feel foolish. And I like, I'll be like, we'll just keep the TV on if it makes you feel better. You know, I'm like putting the TV on and keeping the light on and everything. And like, it was a weird encounter. Fast forward a week from then. I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm just drenched in sweat. Like I'm sweating, I'm drenched, and I'm like full on like, like having rage sex. And I'm like, what? When you wake up. I wake up and I'm doing it and I'm like covered in sweat and I was like, what? And You're like, in a sexual act when you wake I'm up. I'm having sex. Okay. I'm having sex right now and I'm like, what is, I like, pull out and I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, what's going on? She's like, what are you doing? I was like, what happened here? She was like, I don't know. You just, you just got really one track minded about it and you wanted to do it. And I was like, oh, I did this. She's like, yeah. I'm like, it wasn't me. And she was like, no, it was you. And I'm like, no, I think that was the ghost from the other week that did this. And she was like, what are you talking about? And I was just like, I don't know. I'm sweating and I don't remember starting this. And that's not, when do I ever do this? And I don't want to do this. And I think, I think he's fucking with us or he fucked you or whoever that is or whoever the ghost was that I didn't do this. Look, look at me. I'm soft now. I don't even want to be here. I didn't want this activity oh, wait, wait, to occur. You were occur. actually having sex with your girlfriend. I was fully having sex. Okay, I woke up okay, and I was in it. the middle of sex. <laughs> And then all of a sudden you were like, wait. I, I was like, whoa, I'm, I'm awake now. <laughs> right. Who did this? She was like, you're being weird. Why don't you just bang this one out and let's get back to bed. And I was like, no, tell me, how did we get to this place? Crazy. And she was like, you did this. She was like, you woke me up. You didn't say anything. You were just really one track minded about it. And I was yeah. like, whoa, oh my God. Is that the God. only time that's ever happened to you? Those are the only scenarios that that happened. I, I, her and I didn't stay together much longer anyways, and I didn't stay in that house much longer anyways. Mm. So I don't know if it was her or the house, mm. but those were the encounters that, uh, that time that a ghost fucked my girlfriend. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. And used Through me. Through your dick. Yeah. Through used dick. my pathetic dick as a mere <laughs> vessel for this. Of all the dicks in the of world. All the, <laughs> of all the disappointing dicks in the world. Mine was selected as ghost dick. All right. To be exercised. Well, that's kind of an honor in a way. Yeah. <laughs> spooky and, and, uh, and, yeah. and flattering. I, I jerked off with holy water to exercise the demon from my dick <laughs> the following day. That's rec the Pope record. Yeah. yeah, he did. He on the Pope's website. Yeah. Pope.com. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thanks for sharing that. Hey man, you told me to. <laughs> can I say can I say that I've been I've had experiences. It's a type of sleepwalking. I happened for a period of like a year or two where same thing would happen to us mm -hmm. where I would wake up having mid like mid sex like I would wake her up and initiate it and then come to and not remember it at all. I'd be like, oh, oh my god! I was waiting to see if you'd bring it up, but yeah, it was. <laughs> That's so funny. She's like, how much do you want to humiliate yourself? <laughs> I'll <laughs> let you do it. No, I don't well, mind talking about it. It's just a weird thing. And you, didn't you feel that not... that ghost you was even better than you? Probably like he wasn't was. self conscious. <laughs> like, oh yeah. I, I like after that, you're like, oh, you're thinking about ghost, eh? <laughs> thinking, thinking about ghost, about ghost me? <laughs> yeah, I you bet you are. <laughs> no, but it was <laughs> so weird because Ethan was just like he's awake, like himself you know talking to me and everything and then you just wake up all of a sudden like wait what's happening <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird one it's weird. Isn't that strange? It was it was and happening. then it stopped happening too i don't know is it the house you think it happened in israel only 
I don't know. We move. I, I feel like Israel's old enough to be pretty haunted. There's so many ghosts <laughs> fucking taking over my dick. <laughs> <laughs> in Israel, everyone's dick gets taken over every once in a while. <laughs> I find I find some places to be more haunted than others. Mm. And every time I go to Hollywood, I walk into a hotel. I'm like, this place is so fucking haunted. Mm. There's so many disappointed ghosts that mm. died here mm. that just wanted so much more than they got. Right. And now they're bound to this room and I'm, I'm trying to sleep. Oh, no. You know, I have an audition tomorrow and this, this is the this shit ghost, that's haunting me. Yeah, this ghost is just pissed oh. about this. They're going to curse your audition. I've been I've been cursed so many times in, <laughs> in, in Hollywood hotels. I just feel like every single one is like, every time I go into a room in Hollywood, I'm like, someone died here sad. <laughs> oh, no. like every single room in Hollywood. <laughs> right. I'm like, someone had a terrible death in here. Oh, that's probably true. We we got a room in Vegas, and there was blood on the ceiling. On the oh, ceiling? On the ceiling. And I came, and I was like, oh, my gosh, yeah. my brother. I was like, Darren, I'm like, look at this blood. Hmm. He, came, he went like this. He went, ass blood. And I was like, who said that? Who told you that? He goes, I just bet it was. <laughs> ass blood. <laughs> yes, we said ass blood. He just, for him, he assumed that ass blood would get on the ceiling first than any other blood. <laughs> I'm know. trying to imagine a scenario where that happens. Like that he shoots, like that he shoots a bloody diarrhea on the roof. I don't know. I, 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 every scenario I, I want to share is terrible. Ass blood. Yeah, ass blood. That he came in, he was like, "Oh my god, ass blood!" And I was like, "Who said ass blood?" <laughs> and he's like, "It must be." <laughs> All right. Well, I'll, I'll leave you guys with that. Ass blood and uh, ghost dick. Yeah, and, and he's in a bag and in every not, Walmart in the USA. And let's not forget uh, potato <laughs> in the mirror. <laughs> This stuff's great. I urge you all to give it a shot because it's it's interesting and, and I guarantee you've never had anything like it and it's really good. I love that you found a flavor raisin. <laughs> You're putting it back in the bag. That one that one will touch the ground or something. I would have totally popped that raisin flavor. That and raisin. I left some for the boys too. Flavor raisin. Oh, you did? There's, yeah, there's a bunch for the all boys right. over there. Cool. Some buffalo one and pepperoni. Right. Cool. And yeah, well, congratulations. Trip. That's really exciting. Really cool product. I yeah. hope that, that was really great. Yeah, for you. I hope so. I'm, yeah. I'm hoping Americans do what I want them to do and then go to Walmart Shut and buy their pizza in a bag. Fucking <laughs> faces. <laughs> hey, it's low <laughs> carb also, though. So, it's low carb. Uh, if you wanted that, just, you know, if you wanted that, it's low carb, right? That's it. That's all we got. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. Appreciate you. Cool. God bless you. Love you. What else? What are we doing next week? We don't have oh, plans. Oh, I have an exciting announcement. Next week, we have no guests, but the week after, Ninja is joining us. Oh, Sweet. Right. Yeah. Wow, that's going to be a big one. Ninja yeah. is on Monday, the next, I think, we didn't finalize the date, but I think it's going to be on the 23rd. So, that'll be cool. Well, get hype, Twitch. <laughs> get, <laughs> get hype. Yeah, and I'm excited. <laughs> anyway. 500k a month. I think I'll he makes switch. even more. That's just that article. <laughs> I know that was like uh, a headline. Everyone saw the article. And then I started <laughs> calculating the numbers. Yeah. And then I was like, I don't know where his sub count got, but it was somewhere like $800,000 a month just from subs. Bro. That's stupid. It's insane. God yeah. bless him. Good yeah, for I'm him. I'm happy that yeah. this world exists. I'm so happy that that guy was able to carve out. <laughs> Shredder's over it. You want Shredder. Like, wrap it up. <laughs> wrap it up. Shredder, you little idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's tired. He's tired. All right, guys. Got, by the way, guys, he smells really good. We if got you're it. at home wondering if the other dog oh, smells, the dog smells great. Nice. Yeah, we wash Thank him a you. lot. We yeah. wash him at least once a week, but he's such a dirty guy. He gets dirty so fast. <laughs> All right, enough. What's a... Goodbye. See you guys next time. Love Goodbye. you. Bye.